Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois, the Creighton Blue Jays upset the Bradley Braves 71 to 52. That loss puts league leadership in the Missouri Valley Conference into an absolute deadlock. A deadlock that'll be broken today when number eight Tulsa meets Bradley here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. NBC Sports, in association with TBS, presents the best of college basketball on the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. Today, from Robertson Fieldhouse, it's the Golden Hurricanes of Tulsa versus the Bradley Braves. Brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. By Goodyear, for mileage and handling, it helps to have the blimp behind you. And by Allstate Insurance Company, you're in good hands with Allstate. is sold out Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. Today, 8th-ranked Tulsa meets Bradley for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee, alongside a former Drake University head coach, Bob Ornigal. Bob also played his college basketball here for Bradley University back in the early 60s. Each team, Tulsa and Bradley, comes in with a record of 12-3 and in the Missouri Valley Conference regular season. This game, not only for the regular season championship, but also for a home floor berth guaranteed in the upcoming postseason tournament. Now, if Bradley is to be successful against nationally ranked Tulsa, they will more than probably look to their All-America candidate and leading scorer, Mitchell Anderson. The six foot eight inch Anderson has had a tremendous career here, Wayne. I think the first question that we will have to answer early in the ball game today is, he has been bothered recently by back spasms. It affects his play more at the defensive end of the floor than it does at the offensive end of the floor. For Tulsa, it's six foot five inch, Paul Pressey, Truly an All-American basketball player, a great leader, a guy that has broken the University of Tulsa record for steals in a season with 78 and for steals in one single game last Thursday night with eight against Oral Roberts University. And the coaches, Dick Versace for Bradley in his fourth year. He's already brought a Missouri Valley Conference championship here to Peoria, and another one is on the brink. I'll tell you what, Dick Versace says, 50% of what I do is theater, and that's going to be interesting here today. He's done a great job. Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year in 1980 and District 5. NCAA Coach of the Year in 1980. And then you've got Nolan Richardson, an aggressive individual, and his team plays that way defensively. Well, while Dick Versace was doing that back in 1980, Nolan Richardson won the National Junior College Championship with a phenomenal 37-0 record, took four of those starters to Tulsa, and won the NIT last year. All right, this is the final men's regular season basketball game of the Missouri Valley Conference here at Robertson Fieldhouse. The overall series, 45-19 in favor of Bradley University. We'll be back with the opening uh, starting lineups after these messages. Chance America, your chance to show the world's great road cars just how good an American car can be. The name of this great new car is Pontiac 6000, an exciting new front-wheel drive automobile that does its talking where it counts, on the road. It's loaded for bear with an electronically fuel-injected four-cylinder engine, McPherson strut front suspension, power rack and pinion steering, and available V6 or diesel. So let's go Pontiac 6000. Now, the excitement really begins. The antihistamine effect, that drowsy, sleepy feeling you can get from cold remedies with antihistamines. What you need is wide awake relief. Introducing Neosinephrenol Day Relief, the new decongestant capsule that lets you breathe clearly for up to 12 hours without antihistamines. So you're not drowsy, not sleepy. Breathe clearly without the antihistamine effect. Get new Neosinephrenol Day Relief capsules for wide awake relief. This bud's for the guys who take all the heat for us. This bud's for you. This bud's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Ooh, yeah. For all you do. Hey, this bud's for you. Discover Atari and discover knowledge, excitement, and challenge. Discover Atari home computers. 
sophisticated, yet simple enough for your child to use. Feel the thrill of home video games like Super Breakout. Experience coin video games like Tempest. Discover Atari. Atari! And discover how far you can go. Wayne Larravee and Bob Ortigal, we're back at Peoria, Illinois at Robertson Fieldhouse. Now let's go to the Fieldhouse announcer, Paul Herzog, for the announcement of today's opening lineups. Let's welcome the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, starting at one forward, number 53, Bruce Benley. The other forward for Tulsa, number 25, Paul Pressey. Center, number 33, Greg Stewart. And a guard, number 22, Phil Spradling. And a guard, number 12, Mike Anderson. The Golden Hurricane is coached by Nolan Richardson. to today's game after these words. Big game tonight, huh? Yeah, you gonna be there? I'll be there. Frank, I need this analysis before you leave. When you've got an important deadline, you need a Honeywell office automation system. Using a desktop terminal, executives can organize data, analyze statistics, and get their work done. At Honeywell, we know how important it can be to meet a deadline. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Gee, Ollie, this windshield's so messy, I can't see. We need new wiper blades. I know that. Make sure your windshield wipers work when you need them. A new set of Anco wiper blades every year is a quick and inexpensive way to see your way clear. Ollie, without new Anco wipers, we could have been hit by that piano. Oh. Piano! Oh! 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 Here are the officials for today's game. Ron Spittler on the left, Ron Zetcher on the right. Bradley and Tulsa for the Missouri Valley Conference Championship here in Peoria, Illinois. Our starting lineup for Tulsa at the forward positions, 53, Vanley and 25, Pressey. At the center position, number 33, Stewart. At the guards, 22, Spradling and number 12, Anderson. For the Bradley Braves, at the guard positions, it will be Scott, number 3, and 34, the freshman winners. At center, number 50, Reese. And at the forwards, it will be third kill and Anderson. A crowd on their feet here at Peoria, as is the custom until Bradley gets down their first field goal or scores their first points of the ball game. These two teams meeting for the first time in 1982. And everything's at stake as far as postseason tournament berth goes. The winner of this game will take on the number eight team in the Valley next Tuesday night in the opening round of the tournament. You can just feel the electricity, Wayne. It's just super. It's college basketball at its best. And the tap controlled by Willie Scott of the Bradley Braves. Just underway, Willie Scott picked up by Anderson. Donald Reese, the alley-oop down low to Anderson on the reverse. The rebound pulled down by Stewart. The lead for Mike Anderson. 
Anderson, very quick guard, runs the offense. This is Paul Pressey. Dulce into the setup offense. Anderson at the point. Anderson, the leading assist man of the Valley. Averaging 5.5 assists per game. Here's Pressley with the up fake on Anderson. Comes up short on the shot and the rebound taken by the freshman out of Chicago, Illinois. Boise Winters. Willie Scott, the lead to Mitchell Anderson in the corner. This is Winters. Bradley leads it by the score of 2 to nothing. That's a big basket, Wayne, because it comes from a freshman. That could really set the tune for the ball game as far as that young man is concerned. Stewart feeds inside Manley. Nice move by the sophomore. Couldn't make it go. Willie Scott breaks out of the pack for Bradley. David third kill. On the feed to Reese, and we've got our first foul of the ball game. Foul oh, coming up. It'll be on Tulsa. Mike Anderson reaching in, trying to slap the ball away. That's the first on Anderson, the first on the team, sending Donald Reese to the line. 6'9", senior. At this point, uh, Wayne, we've got both teams playing a man-to-man -man defense. Bradley looking like they're going to take advantage of fast break opportunities. They were running with the basketball. Reese has had nine consecutive games where he has scored more than 10 points. He's averaging 14 points and nine rebounds in Valley play. Both teams are a little tight. You can feel that. There's no question about that. You could tell that when Anderson missed that layup. Donald Reese. Three to nothing, Bradley. Bradley plays ahead to Pressy inside Stewart on the drive. Nicely hey, done. Hey, so the lead has been sliced to one in favor of Bradley. 18.37 to go. We're early first half of play. Willie Scott for Bradley. Boise winners out front. Yeah. First field goal of the game for winners, and Bradley on top by three. Mike Anderson for Tulsa, and Paul Pressey on the wing. Pressey down low to Badley. Badley double team. Mike Anderson has a good outside shot. Bradley will fire from the corner. Way off. Anderson the rebound. Here come the Bradley Braves. The lead pass for Winters. Saves the third kill, but it's intercepted by Anderson. Back the other way. Mike Anderson for Tulsa. Pressey dealing. Mitchell Anderson dumps it off to Bradley. The Hurricane will reach up on the offense. Tulsa would like to run here today. Bradley in his own defense. Bradley on the drive in the corner. Anderson. Once again, the lead is down to one in favor of Bradley. Some light full court pressure being applied by Mike Anderson to the backboard as Willie Scott moves it across. Donald Reese down on a third kill on Pressey. Anderson is there. Mitchell Anderson. Three point lead, Bradley. Tulsa with the ball. Pressey. Trying to feed inside of Stewart. Saved by Boise Winters. And knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Tulsa. Wayne, we've got an unusual defensive situation here. It looks like they're playing a man-to-man -man and a diamond. It's a combination-type defense that Bradley is playing. You see Scott stay with Anderson while third kill stays out front. Mitchell Anderson, the rebound, and the shot by Phil Bradley. Willie Scott dealing from the foul line. Yes. Yeah. Let's see if we can pick up the diamond in one now. It looks like a 2-3 zone, but it's not. Five-point lead for Bradley, largest lead of the afternoon. You see Scott go through with Anderson right there, and they stay in the diamond. The diamond in one. Bradley on the drive, and a foul coming up. The foul is against Tulsa. Bill Bradley on the offensive foul. I'll tell you, Wayne, we've seen Tulsa before. Uh, it's a difficult situation for them now, but you can bet that they will not lose their poise. They will not lose control here. That foul is the first on Spradling, the first on the team. 16.30 to go, first half of play. Bradley with a five-point lead. Braves have the ball. That's Reese in the corner, third kill out front. Back to Reese. Reese against Badley. And a foul coming up that is on Reese. Offensive foul as Badley, the sophomore, had position. On Donald Reese in his personal foul, number one. And it is the second team foul. There's a timeout on the floor. The score, Bradley 9, Tulsa 4. We'll be back after these messages.
Bill Russell defined athletic artistry in the 1956 Olympics. And now he's been commissioned by Budweiser to create a painting to help raise funds for our Olympic team. You get on the Budweiser Art Series and help our athletes train now for the gold in 84. And remember, the secret to fine art is ball control. Call toll-free for more information on this art series from Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1984 Olympic Games. You know people like me. We're young, ambitious. These are the uniforms we wear at work. But these are the uniforms we wear when we serve part-time in the National Guard and the Reserves. You see, in the Guard and Reserves, you earn extra money. So you not only serve your country, you serve yourself. Yet while you serve, you can live at home and keep your full-time job. Because in the Guard and Reserves, you don't have to give up one life to live another. The National Guard and the Reserves. Talk to your local recruiter. Have a super burger or a super cheese pie. A super roast beef or a super taco. How can anyone promise you everything? How about a super fish? And get it all right. Super, super high. Bye. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, we just promise you one thing. Great chicken. Fresh, tender, juicy, cook the kernels way, like only we can do it. Just one promise, but we keep it. Great chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Be ringside as Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Then the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars go down to the wire in a team skate off of the World Championship. Plus Women's Pro World Cup surfing on NBC Sports World tomorrow. Bradley leading it. Winners two of two from the field. Bradley is four of eight field goal shooting. Tulsa two of seven. The rebounding. Bradley six. Tulsa just two. So that tells the story of the early going here with 16-19 to go. First half of play. Wayne, we've got Bradley doing an excellent job of running what they call their T game, I believe. Uh, they, what they like to do is clear out the backside. They like to take, take a defensive man out so they can throw the lob pass or throw the ball over the top, which they have done twice to winners, and he scored both times. So it's Bradley fast-breaking, running their T game, and playing a combination defense that ends up as a diamond and one, while Tulsa playing a man-to-man -man defense and running their normal offensive set. But that will change defensively for Tulsa as the game progresses because they'll go to their full court and their half court pressure I am sure. Mike Anderson for Tulsa and Phil Spradling make up the backcourt. Anderson plays to Pressy on the wing. Spradling up high in the corner. Anderson has a good outside shot. Deals inside of Stewart who's bottled up by Scott and a foul coming up. It is on Willie Scott. That is the first on Scott. It'll be the second on the team. Non-shooting affair. And the rubber band man, Paul Pressey, will trigger from the baseline on the right side of the basket. Bill Spradling bobbles and picked up by Mitchell Anderson to Willie Scott. Scott racing in the corner winners. Yes. I think it all goes back, Wayne, to his first shot. He got the first shot down when you're a freshman and you do something like that on a day like today. It does something for you mentally. Six points for winners down low. Stewart with a turn blocked by Reese and a foul. Donald Reese. The man guilty of his second personal foul. That is the third on the team. We get a look at it again here. We have the shot up on off the board by Stewart. Contact was made by Reese. There wasn't any question about that. Stewart will go to the free throw line and an excellent free throw shooter, Wayne. Greg Stewart hitting it 78% from the free throw line overall. Comes up short on his first. And Bob, you just get the impression both sides still a little bit tentative thus far. And I believe Tulsa more tentative and a little bit more hesitant at this point in the game. But I'm willing to bet that that will change. Two great teams. Both these teams belong in the NCAA. Bradley by six. This is Anderson. Anderson and Pressey, two All-America candidates. And did Mitchell Anderson run out of real estate? Yes, he did, according to Ron Spittler at the baseline. Turnover. Bradley from all back to Tulsa. 11 to 5. Bradley with the lead. Steve Harris, number 20, a freshman, is checked into the lineup in the backcourt for Tulsa. Good outside shooter. This is Manley in the corner. Mike Anderson, Paul Pressey open from the foul line. Donald Reese sleeping high for the rebound. And what a job he has done for the Braves in their stretch drive and valley competition. Willie Scott. Inside they go to the freshman. Rather, David Thirdkill. Winners out front. Thirdkill playing in the corner. This is Reese on the wing. Reese is not challenged outside of 15 feet. From the outside, Willie Scott. The 
shooter's touch for Willie Scott. He's got two from the field and four points. Bradley leading by eight. Russie quiets the crowd as he drills one home. That's why he's a great player. He's missed a couple of shots, but he wasn't hesitant at all. He came right back down and hit the 16 or 17 footer. Winners from the point. Scott on the wing. Bradley on the attack. And an offensive foul coming up on Willie Scott. Anderson had position for Tulsa. We get another look at it. Scott making the penetration to his left. Anderson with good position. Scott gets charged with the foul. He tried to beat him on the baseline. Anderson, great anticipation, moved over. Got both feet on the ground. Maintained the position that he should as an excellent defensive player and draws the charge. Second personal on Scott. Fourth on the team. Bradley with a six-point lead. Elsa trying to hang close. We have 14-21 to go. First half of play. Harris with the up thing. Rebound Anderson. Willie Scott on the move. Donald Reese. That's third kill. Tulsa clears the to the person of freshman Steve Harris. Now Mike Anderson. That's Paul Pressey and Anderson along the left side. Here's Harris, number 20. Manley from the foul line. Good position on the rebound by Winters, and he was fouled by Pressey. Pressey trying to come over the top. Personal foul number one on Pressey. Pressey not in position on the offensive board. The shot is taken. The rebounder is up, Pressy over the top, trying to reach and draws the foul. That's one concern that Tulsa has uh, going into this basketball game is that Pressy does not get himself in foul trouble. Three team fouls now in the Golden Hurricane. Bradley with the basketball. Anderson, Willie Scott. You see the straight man-to-man -man defense that Tulsa's playing against Bradley. Pressy really working over Anderson inside. Willie Scott with the lift. Trying to get the shooter's touch. The tap won't go for winners. On the rebound battle, it is cleared by Stewart. This is Mike Anderson. Paul Pressey on the wing. He can hit Harris that. Harris is outside. Drills it home. Steve Harris, the leader in the Missouri Valley in field goal percentage. His first from the field, he's got two points. He could be the difference in the game, Wayne. He's a great shooter. Coming up, foul being indicated on Paul Pressey. That is his second of the fourth on the team. There's a look at Coach Nolan Richardson, Dick Versace on the other side. Bradley Braves, Willie Scott. Tulsa goes to his zone against the out-of-bounds play. A straight 2-3 zone, it looks like. Boise winners from the point. Now Willie Scott. Bradley will be very patient against the zone defense. In the corner, Boise winners. That's Mitchell Anderson. Bradley leading it by four. We have 12.38 to go first half, and winners on loads. That's his first miss in five tries. And that's not the shot that Coach Versace wanted him to take. You can bet on that. Here's Anderson on the drive in traffic, partially deflected and taken by Anderson. Mitchell Anderson of Bradley. Here's Willie Scott. On the feed, Boise Winters has to shovel back outside of Scott. Down low, the drive down on Reese, and we've got a foul coming up. Reese went to the floor with Manley, and the foul coming up on Donald Reese. We get a look here again. Reese turns, goes inside. Manley standing right there. A great defensive play by Manley that time to get his team the ball back, drawing the charge on Donald Reese. Third on Reese, and the fifth team foul. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Bradley 13, Tulsa 9. We'll be back after these messages. What Delta did for the old-fashioned drippy faucet, Delta now does for the old-fashioned two-piece toilet. Introducing the bold beautiful from Delta. Delta's sleek one-piece design is made with a space-age azulite process. It looks like China, but better because it doesn't chip like China. And it's surprisingly affordable. What Delta did for the old-fashioned drippy faucet, Delta now does for the old-fashioned two-piece toilet. The Delta Bowl Beautiful. You can feel the anticipation in the pit of your stomach because you're about to take the first real drive in your new Firebird Trans Am. Your pulse quickens as the exhilarating 5-liter V8 comes to life. Now the road beckons, and freedom is just a few miles away. 
the moment you've been waiting for is here. Pontiac. Now the excitement really begins. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to stop this man and his hot-shooting blue demons. As always, the Irish will be fighting on your side. This encounter will explode tomorrow on NBC Sports. Good luck, Digger. Coming up next is the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you near Pittsburgh, Kansas, will be seeing Nebraska and Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, you'll see Minnesota and Iowa. And in Tulsa, you'll be seeing Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. It's all coming up next here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. Bradley shooting 6 for 12 from the field and Tulsa 4 for 13 from the field, Wayne. But Bradley out rebounding the Hurricane 10 to 5. Stewart with the lead to Bamley on the turn. Nicely done. Now the lead for Bradley, which at one time was eight, has been sliced to two. Willie Scott, some momentary difficulty. Cross towards the mine, two fumbles, but recovered. They'll better get it a hurt. Cross in a hurry, and they do. Willie Scott over the mine. Marty Mines, a junior. Tulsa waited a while, but finally went to that three-quarter court pressure and back into half-court pressure. Marty Mines way off the mark. Mike Anderson the rebound. Here's Steve Harris on the run. Harris feeds Van Lee. Back to Mike Anderson. The shovel for Pressy who pops. The rebound taken by Mitchell Anderson getting high. Proud of three down low. Willie Scott. The feed to third kill on the drive. The rebound inside. Put it over by Marty Mines. Again the lead is four for Bradley. Coming up on the 11 minute mark, first half. Stewart in the lane. Pressy takes the feed. Anderson gets by Mines. Does he get the basket? No, but he was fouled. Barney Mines hit with a personal foul. And Barney Mines, that is his first. It is the sixth on the team as you get a look at Nolan Richardson, the Tulsa head coach. We can see it again here. We have the penetration inside by Anderson. He goes up. Drawing the foul from Mines. Mines a little bit, a little bit anxious coming off that bench, Wayne. He banged up that shot down there. And sometimes in a, in a game of this nature, when it's so big, the way to get into the flow of the game is, is to do it with a great defensive player, to do it with a rebounder, or do it some other way than shooting a, an 18-footer. It really helps the player adjust. Mike Anderson normally shoots 71% from the free throw strike. Fourth in the valley in assists with a 4.2 average. Three-point lead for the, the Bradley Braves. The full court pressure that time, and they'll probably drop the half court pressure, and there it is. Willie Scott doing his best to disrupt the defensive tactic by the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Bradley leading by three. They have led drop this ball game. Anderson from the baseline. Mitchell Anderson has two field goals and four points. Five-point lead, Bradley. At the baseline, Herbert Johnson, and the tap is there for Steve Harris. That's a great effort by a young man that uh, we've mentioned many times all year long. That guy is just going to be a great basketball player, only a freshman. Full court pressure again being employed by Tulsa. Third kill trying to take it across. Third kill looking for help and finds it in Willie Scott. Dishes off to Boise Winters. Pressy takes the rebound off the floor. Tulsa back the other way on the run. Steve Harris, that's his range. About 15 and 20 feet. Harris is deadly. Shoots about 63% from there. Now to one point, Bradley Lane on the fast break. Barney Mine. Oh, back and forth basketball. And again, a three-point lead for Bradley. Mines has four points in the ball game. A great job by the Braves breaking the full court pressure of Tulsa and taking the ball to the basket, which is what you have to do. You can't wait on the Golden Hurricane. Harris off the pick by Pussy. The rebound, third kill. Bradley back the other way. Willie Scott, Barney Mines pulls up. Anderson is there for the rebound and two. We get a look here, Mitchell Anderson, a great offensive rebound, back up and in, is fouled from the side, will have an opportunity in a three-point play. Herbert Jensen guilty of his first personal foul, 
and that is the fifth on the team. As you get a look at the Tulsa Golden Hurricane Huddle, they trail 21-16 with 9.20 to go. First half of play, we'll be back after these messages. This life isn't for everybody, but for me, nothing beats it. And nothing beats my skull, either. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum. Sure feels good. I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And for me, Walt Garrison, this is the only way to live. Try going smokeless with Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend, downbeat style. Whether it's jazz, classical, country, or rock, music and Michelob is always the perfect arrangement. Because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. Put a little weekend in your week. After four exciting weeks, the grand finale, the competition between the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars goes down to the wire. A unique team skate-off to decide the title of the World Pro Figure Skating Championship on NBC Sports World tomorrow. Wayne Larravee and Bob Moore to go back in Peoria, Illinois. Mitchell Anderson, what a first half he is having. Three of four shooting from the floor and seven of the 14 Bradley rebounds. Well, he's doing a great job on the boards, uh, as you indicated to, by mentioning the fact that he had seven, but he's got a couple of offensive rebounds. The baskets, uh, we talked about him at the top of the show. He certainly has been a, a great player, and he certainly is an All-American, as is the young man trying to stop in here today, Paul Pressey from Tulsa. Mitchell Anderson at the live. He did not practice this week because of back spasms. The rebound by Barney Mines, and he keeps it alive for the Bradley Braves, who lead by five with 9.15 to go. First half of play. That's third kill, number 35. Barney Mines on the wing. Anderson is in the corner, and they work it back outside and reshuffle the offense. This game for all the marbles in the valley. The steal by Pressy. Pressy on the drive. Great move. He set a school record on Thursday night against Oral Roberts with eight steals in the victory by Tulsa against their arch rivals, Oral Roberts. Pressy just may be the finest defensive basketball player in America. Pressy has six points offensively for Tulsa here. Three-point Bradley lead. Barney Mines, number 40. Willie Scott, they play catch across the zone. Bradley being very patient at this point. They want a good shot in, inside if they can get it. Willie Scott, Boise winners, baseline. Didn't get the inside shot, but puts his team on top by five. Tulsa on the attack. This is Harris on the drive, and traveling is called. Off the turnover, it'll be Bradley Ball. David third kill will trigger for Bradley. Some light pressure on the backcourt being exerted by Paul Pressey. Braves break it across with no problem. Third kill in the corner. That's Willie Scott lifts it over the zone. Bradley leading by seven. Quickly the Golden Hurricane assemble offensively. 7.43 to go, first half of play. Paul Pressey, Phil Spradling up high. Line drive right on the money by Phil Spradling. The lead has been sliced to five in favor of Bradley, and Spradling has his first two points. Here at Robertson Fieldhouse at Bradley University in Peoria, the score is Bradley 25 and Tulsa 20. I'm Wayne Larravee. With me is Bob Ortigle. The game at this point been hotly contested with Bradley having leads of eight and seven points. They've been the largest advantages of the afternoon. Tulsa on the attack. That's Herbert Johnson inside. That's a great interior feed, Wayne, by Pressy that time. Down low. Excellent pass. Nick Versace on the Bradley bench. His Braves moving across. Three-point lead for Bradley. This is Willie Scott. Tulsa in his own defense. Boise winners, Barney Mine, good outside shooter. Leaves it off for the corner man. Made a third kill, but a foul is called on the pass. Foul coming up on Herbert Johnson. That is his second. 
Wayne, we have a very interesting substitution coming here. It looks to me like David Brown is going to enter the game. David has been out most of the year with a knee problem. He reports and is coming in. Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ortigal, we are in Peoria, Illinois, Bradley University, Bradley leading Tulsa 25 to 22, 6 minutes and 39 seconds left to be played first half, and it has been a hotly contested ball game, as we've been saying. Leads of 8 and 7 have been the largest for Bradley thus far. They have led throughout the ball game. It is Bradley ball, third kill will inbound from the baseline on the right side. The inbounds pass partially deflected, batted high in the air, but taken by... Willie Scott near the midcourt strike. Well, they didn't execute the inbounds pass the way they wanted to, but they're able to save the ball. Now Willie Scott plays the winners. Back to Scott at the point. Boise Winters, the freshman. He has six points, make it eight. Five-point lead. Bradley Braves, 6-18 to go, first half. Tulsa, ranked number eight in the nation on the attack. David Brown in the ball game. His left knee heavily banded. Stewart inside and traffic throws the ball away to Barney Mize. Willie Scott on the break has a two on one, feeds Winters of the baseline. Winters can't make it go and Stewart pulls down the rebound for Tulsa. Bill Spradley plays ahead for Steve Harris. David Brown who's been out most of this season with knee trouble. Spradley leaves for Brown, Brown from deep. Third kill positions himself for the rebound. Bradley with the five-point lead, five minutes, 38 seconds to go, first half of play. Brown very definitely limping, uh, playing without any rhythm, I think, Wayne. He, he really is not himself, but you have to admire his courage. Mines, yes. Seven points the lead for Bradley. Mines has six points. David Brown for Tulsa. This is Steve Harris. Manley at the foul line, bottled up by Mines. Harris gets by Mines, and he's got the open jumper. Third kill, the rebound. Here come the Braves. One man back for Tulsa on the drive. Eight points for that man, Barney Mines. And the largest lead of the afternoon for either team. Nine points. Excellent fast break opportunity by the Braves. A great pass on the break, leading to Mines' basket. Bradley 31, Tulsa 22. There's a look at the Bradley faithful. This the final regularly scheduled men's basketball game of Missouri Valley Conference play here in Peoria. Foul coming up at the line. Marty Mines, Bill Spradling, the man who flipped him on the drive, as you saw. Second personal foul on Spradling. Tulsa now over the limit. And Mines puts in on a three-point play. It makes it an even ten-point lead. Bradley on top. Tulsa with the ball. Anderson. Stewart in the lane. Batted away by third kill nicely, but retrieved by Pressy. And it all happened with Pressy out of the game on the bench. That's when Bradley really widened the league. Here's Pressy. Third kill leaping high. Loses the rebound, but recovers. And now is called for steps by Ron Setcher. That's a very good call, Wayne. If you stand up with a basketball, you have gained an advantage. The rule says that is officially called traveling. It'll be Tulsa basketball. When we resume, we have 4 minutes 39 seconds left to be played first half. That's the story. We'll be back after these messages. The dozens of airlines in this country, one airline for the third year in a row, has carried more passengers than any other in the entire free world. That airline is Eastern. If you help make us America's favorite airline, we thank you. If you haven't flown Eastern recently, give us a try. We'll show you that we really do earn our wings every day. It's kind of slippery. I'll be careful. Besides, we're not alone. Ah, yes. We've got the blimp behind us. The sisters may not know that Goodyear rolls up 9 million miles a year testing tires, but they sure like the traction they get. So, with the blimp behind us, our car handles just, just divinely. <laughs> get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. Oh, it's good to have friends in high places. 
Monday night. Barbara Mandrell, Larry Gatlin, Dolly Parton, and more. Salute the king of country music. I love it. Roy Acuff. Tomorrow on NBC Sports World, it's a USBA championship fight as title holder Frank the Animal Fletcher meets challenger Tony Braxton in a live scheduled 12-rounder from Atlantic City. Plus, the final of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship and the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship from Oahu, Hawaii Scenic North Shore. That's starting at 3 Central Time tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ortigo, we're at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. That's the story with four minutes and 39 seconds to go first half. Paul Pressey triggers the inbounds for Tulsa. Steve Harris, freshman out of Blue Springs, Missouri. Tulsa really needs a basket right here. Quiet things down a little bit. Four minutes left in the half. Anderson over the zone. Third kill keeping the rebound alive, but to Harris. Good position by Stewart down low, and he's fouled on the shot. Mitchell Anderson, the guilty party. That is the first personal foul on Anderson. It will result in a pair of free throws upcoming. We get a look at it again. It's extremely competitive underneath there. Stewart with the offensive rebound, a great effort to back up with the basketball for the layup. Misses it, but it's fouled. We'll go to the free throw line. Greg Stewart, the MVP of the NIT a year ago. A 6'9 senior from the Bronx, New York. Stewart shoots at 78% from the free throw line. He is one of the leaders in the Valley in field goal shooting. Comes up short. Rebound winner. A nine point lead for Bradley. The Braves on the attack led by Willie Scott. Scott and Mike Anderson, the man defending for Tulsa, two of the quickest players in the Valley. Third kill of the basketball. Started by Badley way outside. Marty Mines. Three minutes, 58 seconds to go in the half. Bradley's been in control much of the way. Now leading by nine. Third kill. Third kill looking for help. Tulsa has gone back man to man, gone out of that zone, gone back man to man. I think they went to the zone to try and protect Pressy, who had two fouls. This is third kill on the wing. Willie Scott, he has an outside shot, but right with him is Anderson. That's Winters. He's been hot to the outside, but not that time. Third kill, the rebound, and it is taken away by Pressey. Here's Pressey on the drive with the feed, and an impressive slam by Bruce Family. Pressey gets the steal. Pressey takes the ball down the floor. Pressey makes the great pass. Willie Scott will take it across for Bradley. The lead has been sliced to seven. Braves on top. Inside, that's third kill on the drive. The rebound taken by Pressey, who had position in third kill line to recapture his ball for his first personal foul. Both teams are over the limit. Another look here shows third kill inside. He misses the cripple, which he should have made. Comes back uh, out of frustration, fouls Pressey who got the defensive rebound. And that happens frequently in a game of basketball. You, a young man makes a mistake, uh, does something he shouldn't have done, and then tries to compensate for it, and in the process, compounds the situation and, and makes it all the worse. Paul Pressey misses the first of the one-and-one -one opportunity. Winters chases down. Willie Scott will move it across. Bradley on the attack, leading by seven. Tulsa straight up with that man-to-man -man defense, as we mentioned. Mitchell Anderson to the crowd, out to the outside, Winters. Rebound, Anderson inside with a turn, and a foul! Yes, it comes! Third personal foul on Paul Cressy. Wade Larvey and Bob Ortegel at Robertson Fieldhouse. That is the story. We're first half of play. Bradley has led by as many as 10 points at one juncture. And what would be termed an upset if Bradley could hang on throughout the second half? Missed free throw, rebounded by the Golden Hurricane. And this is Paul Pressy. The lead is nine. Bradley on top. Pressy from the foul line. Make the lead seven for Bradley now. Paul Pressy with eight points in the game. I think Coach Richardson would feel very good if he could get out of this half with Pressy not picking up that third foul. Donald Reese for the Braves is on the bench with three fouls. 
Barney Mines on the wing. Great basketball game, Wayne. It really is. Willie Scott on the weave to Anderson with the hook. Rebound Stewart inside. Pressing the outlet man and ahead it goes to Anderson. Here's the lead for Spradley. Spradley looking inside. Anderson trying to get on low to Stewart. The ball is picked off by third two. The Braves on the move led by Scott. Mines from the corner. Badly the rebound with good position on Boise Winters. Bill Spradling takes it back the other way. Now Mike Anderson. A minute 30 to go. First half. Anderson on the drive. Won't go. The tap is there for Stewart. Stewart and Mitchell Anderson of Bradley fighting for the rebound as Stewart pokes it home. A great rebound and a very, very big basket with about a minute to play. Tulsa cuts it to five. Coming up on the 62nd mark. Third kill gets it across. 57 seconds to go, first half. Bradley has led throughout. They currently enjoy a five-point advantage. Willie Scott. Down low on the drive. It is personal foul number one on Greg Stewart. And it will send David Third Kill to the line. David Third Kill heads to the free throw line. Getting his first two points of the afternoon. Third Kill eyes the bucket. And he completes the three point play. Eight points the lead for Bradley with 46 seconds to go. We are first half of play at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. Anderson and Spradley moving across for Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane came in here ranked number eight in the nation. Both teams with 12 and three conference records. And Tulsa, it appears, will wait for one last shot. Bradley in a 2-3 zone. And the Hurricane will play the perimeter game until it gets down to around 10 seconds to go. There's the clock in the middle of your screen. Tulsa and Bradley for all the marbles regular season Missouri Valley Conference and a guaranteed home floor berth now with 12 seconds to go Tulsa heads into their offense Bradley looking for the shot Spradling from the outside he's got it and the lead has been sliced to six Bill Spradling now with four points as time lines down and this is the first half of play 37-31 our halftime score as they score that last field goal and in a moment we'll be joining my colleague Bob Ornigal down at the court with head coach Dick Versace as you watch the officials head off the floor here at the end of the first half of play and a good ball game and six points is the lead for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane let's get out to the floor and Bob Ornigal We're down here talking with Coach Versace. Uh, Coach Versace, it looked like uh, defensively in the first half you were able to create a lot of problems for Tulsa with some kind of a combination defense. Can you tell us a little bit about it? No. <laughs> All right, I can understand that. It's most effective. What do you have to do in the second half to maintain this lead? Well, it just depends on whether they adjust to it or not. If they adjust to it, then we're going to try to adjust to their adjustment. If we can't do that, we might have to be a little more conventional. Uh, we seem to be able to handle uh, or the variety of defenses that you know that they're, they're noted for and we're doing a pretty good job there we certainly missed Reese in the first half it'd be nice to have him back in the second half thank you coach for coming by continued right, success Bob. okay back to you Wayne okay Bob again the score at halftime 37 to 31 and we'll return to Robertson Fieldhouse Peoria Illinois after these messages And here's your room guarantee. And only Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or we'll make it right, no excuses, or that night you stay free. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain, not any one of them. And this guarantee comes from every one of us at Holiday Inn to you, because we want to take care of you. We give you a guarantee, not excuses. 
Pontiac announces cash bonuses on these exciting new Pontiacs. $750 on any Phoenix. $750 on any J2000. $500 on any T1000. And $500 on any Pontiac 6000. Just take delivery between now and March 31. Pontiac will send you a check. See your participating Pontiac dealer who's contributing to these bonuses. And let's get moving. Now the excitement really begins. What's more natural than natural light? Now I'm asking you, what could be more natural than natural light beer on the grand day of the wearing of the green? Ah, natural light from Anheuser-Busch. It's the beer with the taste for food and fun. Why, it's just the thing for the party, you know. On the day when everyone's Irish, give them a kiss. But before you do, ask them this. What's more natural than natural light? The Army has helped send more people to college than there are people in college today. People proud to have served, proud to have succeeded. Introducing the Army College Fund. For every dollar you put in, Uncle Sam puts in five or more. So after two years in the Army, you can have $15,200 for college. Call for your free booklet on the Army College Fund and be all you can be. We'll be back with the Bell System College Basketball Report after these messages from your local station. Sunday at a special time, Hodge and John make a false arrest. He's not drunk, he's deaf. On chips. Then it's 100 of the world's sexiest women in Bob Hope's Women I Love, Beautiful But Funny. And just when you thought it was safe to watch the tube, it's an all-new TV Censored Bloopers 3. It all happens Sunday on NBC. Check the outstanding values on the latest tap and microwaves with Browning Element. Now at Cohen's, downtown Peoria, Sheridan Village, and Pekin. You could win $1,000 or more in Thompson Food Basket's Jackpot Day Contest. We'll have a drawing every week on television, and if your name is drawn and you've had your card punched that week, you win. It's as simple as that, nothing to buy. If the name drawn has not had their card punched that week, then $500 is added to next week's jackpot. Why, you could be winning thousands of dollars, and it costs you nothing to enter or play. Just register at your nearby Thompson Food Basket store, pick up a set of the rules, and get your jackpot card. Win thousands of dollars in Thompson Food Basket's Jackpot Day Weekly Contest. Register today. Now you can do almost all your banking transactions by phone, the money phone, at one of the better banks, Dunlap, Wyoming, Glassford, or Bartonville. Just pick up your phone anywhere in the world and call your special money phone number 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and transfer funds from checking to savings or vice versa. Make payments on loans, mortgages, or have someone call you the following day. Now there's another reason why we're known as the better banks, and there's one near you. Weekend Sports with Les Shapiro, tonight on 25. Sport is brought to you by the Bell System Yellow Pages. If you want to save time and energy, take the first step. Let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. Honey, that blue paint looks fine for our new house, but I don't think we brought enough with us. Yeah, and who knows if there's a custom paint store around here. D&W, paint and paint supplies. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks when your fingers do the walking. You save gas, money, and time. Alves Paint, corner of Oak and Third. We match colors. Looks like we've run out. That's okay, Dad. We'll just run out to the corner for some more. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We match colors. Let you... Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. The Creighton Blue Jays upset the Bradley Braves, 71 to 52. That loss puts league leadership in the Missouri Valley Conference into an absolute deadlock. A deadlock that will be broken today when number eight Tulsa meets Bradley here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. NBC Sports, in association with TBS, presents the best of college basketball on the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week. Today, from Robertson Fieldhouse, it's the Golden Hurricanes of Tulsa versus the Bradley Braves. Brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. By Goodyear, for mileage and handling, it helps to have the blimp behind you. And by Allstate Insurance Company, you're in good hands with Allstate. This 
is sold out. Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. Today, 8th-ranked Tulsa meets Bradley for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee, alongside a former Drake University head coach, Bob Ornigal. Bob also played his college basketball here for Bradley University back in the early 60s. Each team, Tulsa and Bradley, comes in with a record of 12-3 and in the Missouri Valley Conference regular season. This game, not only for the regular season championship, but also for a home floor berth guaranteed in the upcoming postseason tournament. Now, if Bradley is to be successful against nationally ranked Tulsa, they will more than probably look to their All-America candidate and leading scorer, Mitchell Anderson. The six foot eight inch Anderson has had a tremendous career here, Wayne. I think the first question that we will have to answer early in the ball game today is he has been bothered recently by back spasms. It affects his play more at the defensive end of the floor than it does at the offensive end of the floor. For Tulsa, it's six foot five inch Paul Pressey, truly an All American basketball player, a great leader, a guy that has broken the University of Tulsa record for steals in a season with 78 and for steals in one single game last Thursday night with eight against Oral Roberts University. And the coaches, Dick Versace for Bradley in his fourth year. He's already brought a Missouri Valley Conference championship here to Peoria, and another one is on the brink. I tell you what, Dick Versace says, 50% of what I do is theater, and that's going to be interesting here today. He's done a great job. Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year in 1980 and District 5 NCAA Coach of the Year in 1980. And then you've got Nolan Richardson, an aggressive individual and his team plays that way defensively. Well, while Dick Versace was doing that back in 1980, Nolan Richardson won the National Junior College Championship with a phenomenal 37-0 record, took four of those starters to Tulsa, and won the NIT last year. All right, this is the final men's regular season basketball game of the Missouri Valley Conference here at Robertson Fieldhouse. The overall series, 45-19 in favor of Bradley University. We'll be back with the opening uh, starting lineups after these messages. Chance America, your chance to show the world's great road cars just how good an American car can be. The name of this great new car is Pontiac 6000, an exciting new front-wheel drive automobile that does its talking where it counts, on the road. It's loaded for bear with an electronically fuel-injected four-cylinder engine, McPherson strut front suspension, power rack and pinion steering, and available V6 or diesel. So let's go Pontiac 6000. Now, the excitement really begins. The antihistamine effect, that drowsy, sleepy feeling you can get from cold remedies with antihistamines. What you need is wide awake relief. Introducing Neosinephrenol Day Relief, the new decongestant capsule that lets you breathe clearly for up to 12 hours without antihistamines. So you're not drowsy, not sleepy. Breathe clearly without the antihistamine effect. Get new Neosinephrenol Day Relief capsules for wide awake relief. This bud's for the guys who take all the heat for us. This bud's for you. This bud's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Ooh, yeah. For all you do. Hey, this bud's for you. Discover Atari and discover knowledge, excitement, and challenge. Discover Atari home computers. Sophisticated, yet simple enough for your child to use. Feel the thrill of home video games like Super Breakout. Experience coin video games like Tempest. Discover Atari. Atari! And discover how far you can go. Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ornigal, we're back at Peoria, Illinois at Robertson Fieldhouse. Now let's go to the Fieldhouse announcer, Paul Herzog, for the announcement of today's opening lineups. Let's welcome the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, starting at one forward, number 53, Bruce Benley. The other forward for Tulsa, number 25, Paul Pressey. Center, number 33, Greg Stewart. And a guard, number 22, Phil Spradling. And a guard, number 12, Mike Anderson. The Golden Hurricane is coached 
by Nolan Richardson. And now the opening lineup for your Bradley Gray. And a forward, number 11, Mitchell J. David Thurkill. At center, number 50, Donald Reese. And a guard, number three, Willie Scott. Thirty-four, Boise Winter. The Braves are coached by Dick Versace. We'll have the opening tip-off to today's game after these words. Big game tonight, huh? You ain't gonna be there. I'll be there. Frank, I need this analysis before you leave. When you've got an important deadline, you need a Honeywell office automation system. Using a desktop terminal, executives can organize data, analyze statistics, and get their work done. At Honeywell, we know how important it can be to meet a deadline. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Gee, Ollie, this windshield's so messy, I can't see. <coughs> We need new wiper blades. I know that. Make sure your windshield wipers work when you need them. A new set of Anco wiper blades every year is a quick and inexpensive way to see your way clear. Ollie, without new Anco wipers, we could have been hit by that piano. Oh. Piano? No! Oh! 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 Here are the officials for today's game. Ron Spittler on the left, Ron Zetcher on the right. Bradley and Tulsa for the Missouri Valley Conference Championship here in Peoria, Illinois. Our starting lineup for Tulsa at the forward positions, 53, Vanley, and 25, Pressey. At the center position, number 33, Stewart. At the guards, 22, Spradling, and number 12, Anderson. For the Bradley Braves, at the guard positions, it will be Scott, number 3, and 34, the freshman winners. At center, number 50, Reese, and at the forwards, it will be third kill and Anderson. A crowd on their feet here at Peoria, as is the custom until Bradley gets down their first field goal or scores their first points of the ball game. These two teams meeting for the first time in 1982. And everything's at stake as far as postseason tournament berth goes. The winner of this game will take on the number eight team in the Valley next Tuesday night in the opening round of the tournament. You can just feel the electricity, Wayne. It's just super. It's college basketball at its best. And the tap controlled by Willie Scott of the Bradley Braves. Just underway, Willie Scott picked up by Anderson. Donald Reese, the alley-oop down low to Anderson on the reverse. The rebound pulled down by Stewart. The lead for Mike Anderson. Anderson, very quick guard, runs the offense. This is Paul Pressey. Tulsa into the setup offense. Anderson at the point. Anderson, the leading assist man of the Valley, averaging 5.5 assists per game. Here's Presley with the up fake on Anderson. Comes up short on the shot and the rebound taken by the freshman out of Chicago, Illinois. Boise winners. Willie Scott, the lead to Mitchell Anderson in the quarter. This is winners. Bradley leads it by the score of 2-0. That's a big basket, Wayne, because it comes from a freshman. That could really set the tune for the ball game as far as that young man is concerned. Stewart feeds inside Manley. Nice move by the sophomore. Couldn't make it go. Willie Scott breaks out of the pack for Bradley. David third kill. On the feed to Reese, and we've got our first foul of the ball game. Foul coming up. It'll be on Tulsa. Mike Anderson reaching in, trying to slap the ball away. That's the first on Anderson, the first on the team, sending Donald Reese to the line. 6'9", senior. At this point, uh, Wayne, we've got both teams 
playing a man-to-man -man defense. Bradley looking like they're going to take advantage of fast break opportunities. They were running with the basketball. Reese has had nine consecutive games where he has scored more than 10 points. He's averaging 14 points and nine rebounds in Valley play. Both teams are a little tight. You can feel that. There's no question about that. You could tell that when Anderson missed that layup. Final three. Three to nothing. Bradley. Bradley plays ahead to Pressy. Inside Stewart on the drive. Nicely hey, done. So the lead has been sliced to one in favor of Bradley. 18.37 to go. We're early first half of play. Willie Scott for Bradley. Boise winners out front. Yeah. First field goal of the game for winners, and Bradley on top by three. Mike Anderson for Tulsa, and Paul Pressey on the wing. Pressey down low to Bradley. Bradley double team. Mike Anderson with a good outside shot. Bradley will fire from the corner. Way off. Anderson the rebound. Here come the Bradley Braves. The lead pass for winners. Saves the third kill, but it's intercepted by Anderson. Back the other way. Mike Anderson for Tulsa. Press is dealing. Mitchell Anderson dumps it off to Bradley. The Hurricane will reach up on the offense. Tulsa would like to run here today. Bradley in his own defense. Bradley on the drive in the corner. Anderson. Once again, the lead is down to one in favor of Bradley. The blight full court pressure being applied by Mike Anderson to the backcourt as Willie Scott moves it across. Donald Reese down low to third kill on Pressey. Anderson is there. Mitchell Anderson. Three point lead, Bradley. Tulsa with the ball. Pressey. Trying to feed inside of Stewart. Saved by Boise Winters. And knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Tulsa. Wayne, we've got an unusual defensive situation here. It looks like they're playing a man-to-man -man and a diamond. It's a combination-type defense that Bradley is playing. You see Scott stay with Anderson while Third Kill stays out front. Mitchell Anderson, the rebound, of the shot by Phil Bradley. Willie Scott dealing from the foul line. Yes. Let's see if we can pick up the diamond in one now. It looks like a 2-3 zone, but it's not. Five-point lead for Bradley, largest lead of the afternoon. You see Scott go through with Anderson right there, and they stay in the diamond. The diamond in one. Bradley on the drive, and a foul coming up. The foul is against Tulsa. Bill Bradley on the offensive foul. I'll tell you, Wayne, we've seen Tulsa before. Uh, it's a difficult situation for them now, but you can bet that they will not lose their poise. They will not lose control here. That foul is the first on Spradling, the first on the team. 16.30 to go, first half of play. Bradley with a five-point lead. Braves have the ball. That's Reese in the corner, third kill out front. Back to Reese. Reese against Badley. And a foul coming up that is on Reese. Offensive foul as Badley, the sophomore, had position. On Donald Reese in his personal foul, number one. And it is the second team foul. There's a timeout on the floor. The score, Bradley 9, Tulsa 4. We'll be back after these messages. Bill Russell defined athletic artistry in the 1956 Olympics. And now he's been commissioned by Budweiser to create a painting to help raise funds for our Olympic team. You could own the Budweiser Art Series and help our athletes train now for the gold in 84. And remember, the secret to fine art is ball control. Call toll-free for more information on this art series from Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1984 Olympic Games. You know people like me. We're young, ambitious. These are the uniforms we wear at work. But these are the uniforms we wear when we serve part-time in the National Guard and the Reserves. You see, in the Guard and Reserves, you earn extra money. So you not only serve your country, you serve yourself. Yet while you serve, you can live at home and keep your full-time job. Because in the Guard and Reserves, you don't have to give up one life to live another. The National Guard and the Reserves. Talk to your local recruiter. Have a super burger or a super cheese pie, a super roast beef or a super taco. How can anyone promise you everything? How about a super fish? 
and get it all right. Super, super high. Bye. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, we just promise you one thing. Great chicken. Fresh, tender, juicy. Cook the Colonel's way. Like only we can do it. Just one promise, but we keep it. Great chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. Be ringside as Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Then the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars go down to the wire in a team skate off of the World Championship. Plus Women's Pro World Cup surfing on NBC Sports World tomorrow. Bradley leading it. Winners two of two from the field. Bradley is four of eight field goal shooting. Tulsa two of seven the rebounding. Bradley six, Tulsa just two. So that tells the story of the early going here with 16-19 to go. First half of play. Wayne, we've got Bradley doing an excellent job of running what they call their tee game, I believe. Uh, they, what they like to do is clear out the backside. They like to take, take a defensive man out so they can throw the lob pass or throw the ball over the top, which they have done twice to winners, and he scored both times. So it's Bradley fast-breaking, running their tee game, and playing a combination defense that ends up as a diamond and one, while Tulsa playing a man-to-man -man defense and running their normal offensive set. But that will change defensively for Tulsa as the game progresses because they'll go to their full court and their half court pressure I am sure. Mike Anderson for Tulsa and Phil Spradling make up the backcourt. Anderson plays to Pressy on the wing. Spradling up high in the corner. Anderson has a good outside shot. Deals inside of Stewart is bottled up by Scott and a foul coming up. It is on Willie Scott. That is the first on Scott. It'll be the second on the team. Non shooting affair. And the rubber band man, Paul Pressey, will trigger from the baseline on the right side of the basket. Bill Spradling bobbles and picked up by Mitchell Anderson to Willie Scott. Scott racing in the corner winners. Yes. I think it all goes back, Wayne, to his first shot. He got the first shot down when you're a freshman and you do something like that on a day like today. It does something for you mentally. Six points for winners down low. Stewart with a turn blocked by Reese and a foul. Donald Reese. The man guilty of his second personal foul. That is the third on the team. We get a look at it again here. We have the shot up on off the board by Stewart. Contact was made by Reese. There wasn't any question about that. Stewart will go to the free throw line and an excellent free throw shooter, Wayne. Greg Stewart hitting it 78% from the free throw line overall. Comes up short on his first. And Bob, you just get the impression both sides still a little bit tentative thus far. And I believe Tulsa more tentative and a little bit more hesitant at this point in the game. But I'm willing to bet that that will change. Two great teams. Both these teams belong in the NCAA. Bradley by six. This is Anderson. Anderson and Pressey, two All-America candidates. And did Mitchell Anderson run out of real estate? Yes, he did, according to Ron Spickler at the baseline. Turnover. Bradley. The ball back to Tulsa. 11 to 5. Bradley with the lead. Steve Harris, number 20, a freshman, is checked into the lineup in the backcourt for Tulsa. Good outside shooter. This is Manley in the corner. Mike Anderson, Paul Pressey open from the foul line. Donald Reese leaping high for the rebound. And what a job he has done for the Braves in their stretch drive and valley competition. Willie Scott. Inside they go to the freshman, rather, David Thirdkill. Winners out front, Thirdkill playing in the corner. This is Reese on the wing. Reese is not challenged outside of 15 feet. From the outside, Willie Scott. The shooter's touch for Willie Scott. He's got two from the field and four points. Bradley leading by eight. Pressy quiets the crowd as he drills one home. That's why he's a great player. He's missed a couple of shots, but he wasn't hesitant at all. He came right back down and hit the 16 or 17 footer. Winners from the point. Scott on the wing. Bradley on the attack. And an offensive foul coming up on Willie Scott. Anderson at position for Tulsa. We get another look at it. Scott making the penetration to his left. Anderson with good position. Scott gets charged with the foul. He tried to beat him on the baseline. Anderson, great anticipation, moved over. Got both feet on the ground. Maintained the position that he should as an excellent defensive player and draws the charge. Second personal on Scott. Fourth on the team. Bradley with a six-point lead. Elsa trying to hang close. We have 14-21 to go. First half of play. Harris with the up fake. Rebound Anderson. Willie Scott on the move. Battle Reese. That's third kill. 
Tulsa clears the bar to the person of freshman Steve Harris. Now Mike Anderson. That's Paul Pressey and Anderson along the left side. Here's Harris, number 20. Manley from the foul line. Good position on the rebound by Winters, and he was fouled by Pressey. Pressey trying to come over the top. Personal foul number one on Pressey. Pressey not in position on the offensive board. The shot is taken. The rebounder is up. Pressey over the top trying to reach and draws the foul. That's one concern that Tulsa has uh, going into this basketball game is that Pressey does not get himself in foul trouble. Three team fouls now on the Golden Hurricane. Bradley with the basketball. Anderson. Willie Scott. You see the straight man-to-man -man defense that Tulsa's playing against Bradley. Pressey really working over Anderson inside. Willie Scott with the lift. Trying to get the shooters touch the tap. Won't go for winners. On the rebound battle, it is cleared by Stewart. This is Mike Anderson. Paul Pressey on the wing. He can hit Harris that. Harris is outside. Drills it home. Steve Harris, the leader in the Missouri Valley in field goal percentage. His first from the field, he's got two points. He could be the difference in the game, Wayne. He's a great shooter. Got a foul coming up. Foul being indicated on Paul Pressey. That is his second of the fourth on the team. There's a look at Coach Nolan Richardson. Dick Versace on the other side. Bradley Braves. Willie Scott. Tulsa goes to his zone against the out-of-bounds play. A straight 2-3 zone, it looks like. Boise winners from the point. Now Willie Scott. Bradley will be very patient against the zone defense. In the corner, Boise winners. That's Mitchell Anderson. Bradley leading it by four. We have 12.38 to go first half, and winners on lows. That's his first miss in five tries. And that's not the shot that Coach Versace wanted him to take. You can bet on that. Here's Anderson on the drive in traffic, partially deflected and taken by Anderson. Mitchell Anderson of Bradley. Here's Willie Scott. On the feed, Boise winners has to shovel back outside of Scott. Down low, the drive down on Reese, and we've got a foul coming up. Reese went to the floor with Manley and the foul coming up on Donald Reese. We get a look here again. Reese turns, goes inside. Manley standing right there. A great defensive play by Manley that time to get his team the ball back, drawing the charge on Donald Reese. Third on Reese and the fifth team foul. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Bradley 13, Tulsa 9. We'll be back after these messages. What Delta did for the old-fashioned drippy faucet, Delta now does for the old-fashioned two-piece toilet. Introducing the bold beautiful from Delta. Delta's sleek one-piece design is made with a space-age azulite process that looks like China, but better because it doesn't ship like China. <laughs> and it's surprisingly affordable. What Delta did for the old-fashioned drippy faucet, Delta now does for the old-fashioned two-piece toilet. The Delta bold beautiful. You can feel the anticipation in the pit of your stomach because you're about to take the first real drive in your new Firebird Trans Am. Your pulse quickens as the exhilarating 5-liter V8 comes to life. Now the road beckons and freedom is just a few miles away. The moment you've been waiting for is here. Pontiac. Now the excitement really begins. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to stop this man and his hot-shooting blue demons. As always, the Irish will be fighting on your side. This encounter will explode tomorrow on NBC Sports. Good luck, Digger. Coming up next is the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you near Pittsburgh, Kansas, will be seeing Nebraska and Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, you'll see Minnesota and Iowa. And in Tulsa, you'll be seeing Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. It's all coming up next here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. Bradley shooting 6 for 12 from the field and Tulsa 4 for 13 from the field, Wayne. But Bradley out rebounding the Hurricane 10 to 5. Stewart with the feed to Manley on the turn. Nicely done. 
Now the lead for Bradley, which at one time was eight, has been sliced to two. Willie Scott, some momentary difficulty. Cross court the mind, two fumbles, but recovered. Well, better get it a hurt cross in a hurry, and they do. Willie Scott over the mind. Marty Mines, a junior. Tulsa waited a while, but finally went to that three-quarter court pressure and back into half-court pressure. Marty Mines way off the mark. Mike Anderson, the rebound. Here's Steve Harris on the run. Harris feeds Van Lee. Back to Mike Anderson. The shovel for Pressy who pops. The rebound taken by Mitchell Anderson getting high. Proud of three down low. Willie Scott, the feed to third kill on the drive. The rebound inside, put through by Marty Mines. Again, the lead is four for Bradley. Coming up on the 11 minute mark, first half. Stewart in the lane. Pressy takes the feed. Anderson gets by Mines. Does he get the basket? No, but he was fouled. Barney Mines hit with a personal foul. And Barney Mines, that is his first. It is the sixth on the team as you get a look at Nolan Richardson, the Tulsa head coach. We can see it again here. We have the penetration inside by Anderson. He goes up, drawing the foul from Mines. Mines a little bit, a little bit anxious coming off that bench, Wayne. He banged up that shot down there. And sometimes in a, in a game of this nature, when it's so big, the way to get into the flow of the game is, is to do it with a great defensive player, to do it with a rebounder, or do it some other way than shooting a, an 18-footer. It really helps the player adjust. Mike Anderson normally shoots 71% from the free throw strike. Fourth in the Valley in assists with a 4.2 average. Three-point lead for the, the Bradley Braves. The full court pressure that time, and they'll probably drop the half court pressure, and there it is. Willie Scott doing his best to disrupt the defensive tactic by the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Bradley leading by three. They have led throughout this ball game. Anderson from the baseline. Mitchell Anderson has two field goals and four points. Five-point lead, Bradley. At the baseline, Herbert Johnson. And the tap is there for Steve Harris. That's a great effort by a young man that uh, we've mentioned many times all year long. That guy is just going to be a great basketball player, only a freshman. Full court pressure again being employed by Tulsa. Third kill, try to take it across. Third kill looking for help and finds it in Willie Scott. Dishes off to Boise Winters. Pressy takes the rebound off the floor. Tulsa back the other way on the run. Steve Harris, that's his range. About 15 to 20 feet. Harris is deadly. Shoots about 63% from there. Now to one point, Bradley Lane on the fast break. Barney Mine. Oh, back and forth basketball. And again, a three-point lead for Bradley. Mines has four points in the ball game. A great job by the Braves breaking the full court pressure of Tulsa and taking the ball to the basket, which is what you have to do. You can't wait on the Golden Hurricane. Harris off the pick by Pussy. The rebound, third kill. Bradley back the other way. Billy Scott, Barney Mines pulls up. Anderson is there for the rebound of two. We get a look here, Mitchell Anderson, a great offensive rebound, back up and in, is fouled from the side, will have an opportunity in a three-point play. Herbert Jensen guilty of his first personal foul, and that is the fifth on the team as you get a look at the Tulsa Golden Hurricane Huddle. They trail 21-16 with 9.20 to go. First half of play, we'll be back after these messages. This life isn't for everybody, but for me, nothing beats it. And nothing beats my skull, either. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum. Sure feels good. I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And for me, Walt Garrison, this is the only way to live. Try going smokeless with Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend, downbeat style. Whether it's jazz, classical, country, or rock, 
music and Michelob is always the perfect arrangement because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. Put a little weekend in your week. After four exciting weeks, the grand finale, the competition between the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars goes down to the wire. A unique team skate-off to decide the title of the World Pro Figure Skating Championship on NBC Sports World tomorrow. Wayne Larravee and Bob Ortego back in Peoria, Illinois. Mitchell Anderson, what a first half he is having. Three of four shooting from the floor and seven of the 14 Bradley rebounds. Well, he's doing a great job on the boards, uh, as you indicated to, by mentioning the fact that he had seven, but he's got a couple of offensive rebounds. The baskets, uh, we talked about him at the top of the show. He certainly has been a, a great player, and he certainly is an All-American, as is the young man trying to stop him here today, Paul Pressey from Tulsa. Mitchell Anderson at the line. He did not practice this week because of back spasms. The rebound by Barney Mines, and he keeps it alive for the Bradley Braves, who lead by five with 9.15 to go. First half of play. That's third kill, number 35. Barney Mines on the wing. Anderson is in the corner, and they work it back outside and reshuffle the offense. This game for all the marbles in the valley. The steal by Pressey. Pressey on the drive. Great move. He set a school record on Thursday night against Oral Roberts with eight steals in the victory by Tulsa against their arch rivals, Oral Roberts. Pressey just may be the finest defensive basketball player in America. Pressey has six points offensively for Tulsa here. Three-point Bradley lead. Barney Mines, number 40. Willie Scott, they play catch across the zone. Bradley being very patient at this point. They want a good shot inside if they can get it. Willie Scott, Boise winners, baseline. Didn't get the inside shot, but puts his team on top by five. Tulsa on the attack. This is Harris on the drive, and traveling is called. Off the turnover, it'll be Bradley Ball. David third kill will trigger for Bradley. Some light pressure on the backcourt being exerted by Paul Pressey. Braves break it across with no problem. Third kill in the corner. That's Willie Scott lifts it over the zone. Bradley leading by seven. Quickly the Golden Hurricane assemble offensively. 7.43 to go, first half of play. Paul Pressey, Phil Spradling up high. Line drive right on the money by Phil Spradling. The lead has been sliced to five in favor of Bradley, and Spradling has his first two points. Here at Robertson Fieldhouse at Bradley University in Peoria, the score is Bradley 25 and Tulsa 20. I'm Wayne Larrabee, with me is Bob Ortigle. The game at this point been hotly contested with Bradley having leads of eight and seven points. They've been the largest advantages of the afternoon. Tulsa on the attack, that's Herbert Johnson inside. That's a great interior feed, Wayne, by Pressey that time. Down low, excellent pass. Nick Versace on the Bradley bench. His Braves moving across. Three-point lead for Bradley. This is Willie Scott, Tulsa in his own defense. Boise winners, Marty Mine, good outside shooter. Leaves it off for the corner man. Made a third kill, but a foul is called on the pass. Foul coming up on Herbert Johnson. That is his second. Wayne, we have a very interesting substitution coming here. It looks to me like David Brown is going to enter the game. David has been out most of the year with a knee problem. He reports and is coming in. Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ortigal. We are in Peoria, Illinois, Bradley University. Bradley leading Tulsa 25 to 22. Six minutes and 39 seconds left to be played first half. And it has been a hotly contested ball game, as we've been saying. Leads of eight and seven have been the largest for Bradley thus far. They have led throughout the ball game. It is Bradley Ball. Third kill will inbound from the baseline on the right side. The inbounds pass partially deflected, batted high in the air, but taken by Willie Scott near the midcourt strike. 
Well, they didn't execute the inbounds pass the way they wanted to, but they're able to save the ball. Now Willie Scott plays the winners. Back to Scott at the point. Boise Winters, the freshman. He has six points, make it eight. Five-point lead. Bradley Braves, 6-18 to go, first half. Tulsa, ranked number eight in the nation on the attack. David Brown in the ball game. His left knee heavily banded. Stewart inside in traffic. Throws the ball away to Barney Mize. Willie Scott on the break. Has a two-on-one. Feeds Winters at the baseline. Winters can't make it go. And Stewart pulls down the rebound for Tulsa. Bill Spradley plays ahead for Steve Harris. David Brown has been out most of this season with knee trouble. Spradling leaves for Brown. Brown from deep. Third kill positions himself for the rebound. Bradley with the five-point lead, five minutes, 38 seconds to go, first half of play. Brown very definitely limping, uh, playing without any rhythm, I think, Wayne. He, he really is not himself, but you have to admire his courage. Bynes gets it. Seven points the lead for Bradley. Bynes has six points. David Brown for Tulsa. This is Steve Harris. Manley at the foul line, bottled up by Mines. Harris gets by Mines, and he's got the open jumper. Third kill, the rebound. Here come the Braves. One man back for Tulsa on the drive. Eight points for that man, Barney Mines. And the largest lead of the afternoon for either team. Nine points. Excellent fast break opportunity by the Braves. A great pass on the break, leading to Mines' basket. Bradley 31, Tulsa 22. There's a look at the Bradley faithful. This the final regularly scheduled men's basketball game of Missouri Valley Conference play here in Peoria. Foul coming up at the line. Marty Mines, Bill Spradling, the man who flipped him on the drive, as you saw. Second personal foul on Spradling. Tulsa now over the limit, and Mines puts in on a three-point play. It makes it an even ten-point lead. Bradley on top. Tulsa with the ball. Anderson. Stewart in the lane. Batted away by third kill nicely, but retrieved by Pressy. And it all happened with Pressy out of the game on the bench. That's when Bradley really widened the league. Here's Pressy. Third kill leaping high. Loses the rebound, but recovers. And now is called for steps by Ron Setcher. That's a very good call, Wayne. If you stand up with a basketball, you have gained an advantage. The rule says that is officially called traveling. It'll be Tulsa basketball. When we resume, we have 4 minutes 39 seconds left to be played first half. That's the story. We'll be back after these messages. The dozens of airlines in this country, one airline for the third year in a row, has carried more passengers than any other in the entire free world. That airline is Eastern. If you help make us America's favorite airline, we thank you. If you haven't flown Eastern recently, give us a try. We'll show you that we really do earn our wings every day. It's kind of slippery. I'll be careful. Besides, we're not alone. Ah, yes. We've got the blimp behind us. The sisters may not know that Goodyear rolls up 9 million miles a year testing tires, but they sure like the traction they get. So, with the blimp behind us, our car handles just, just divinely. <laughs> get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. Oh, it's good to have friends in high places. Monday night, Barbara Mandrell, Larry Gatlin, Dolly Parton, and more. Salute the king of country music. I love it. Roy Acuff. Tomorrow on NBC Sports World, it's a USBA championship fight as title holder Frank the Animal Fletcher meets challenger Tony Braxton in a live scheduled 12-rounder from Atlantic City. Plus, the final of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship and the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship from Oahu, Hawaii Scenic North Shore. That's starting at 3 Central Time tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ortigal. We're at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. That's the story with four minutes and 39 seconds to go first half. Paul Pressey triggers the inbounds for Tulsa. Steve Harris, freshman out of Blue Springs, Missouri. 
Tulsa really needs a basket right here. Quiet things down a little bit. Four minutes left in the half. Anderson over the zone. Third kill keeping the rebound alive, but to Harris. Good position by Stewart down low, and he's fouled on the shot. Mitchell Anderson, the guilty party. That is the first personal foul on Anderson. It will result in a pair of free throws upcoming. We get a look at it again. It's extremely competitive underneath there. Stewart with the offensive rebound, a great effort to back up with the basketball for the layup. Misses it, but it's fouled. We'll go to the free throw line. Greg Stewart, the MVP of the NIT a year ago. A 6'9 senior from the Bronx, New York. Stewart shoots at 78% from the free throw line. He is one of the leaders in the Valley in field goal shooting. Comes up short. Rebound winner. A nine point lead for Bradley. The Braves on the attack led by Willie Scott. Scott and Mike Anderson, the man defending for Tulsa, two of the quickest players in the Valley. Third kill of the basketball. Started by Badley way outside. Marty Mines. Three minutes, 58 seconds to go in the half. Bradley's been in control much of the way. Now leading by nine. Third kill. Third kill looking for help. Tulsa has gone back man to man, gone out of that zone, gone back man to man. I think they went to the zone to try and protect Pressy, who had two fouls. This is third kill on the wing. Willie Scott, he has an outside shot, the right wing of his hands. That's Winters. He's been hot from the outside, but not that time. Third kill, the rebound, and it is taken away by Pressy. Here's Pressy on the drive with the feed and an impressive slam by Bruce Family. Pressy gets the steal. Pressy takes the ball down the floor. Pressy makes the great pass. Willie Scott will take it across for Bradley. The lead has been sliced to seven. Braves on top. Inside, that's third kill on the drive. The rebound taken by Pressy, who had position in third kill trying to recapture his ball for his first personal foul. Both teams are over the limit. Another look here shows third kill inside. He misses the cripple, which he should have made. Comes back uh, out of frustration, fouls Pressy who got the defensive rebound. And that happens frequently in a game of basketball. You, a young man makes a mistake, uh, does something he shouldn't have done, and then tries to compensate for it, and in the process, compounds the situation and, and makes it all the worse. Paul Pressy misses the first of the one-and-one -one opportunity. Winters chases down. Willie Scott will move it across. Bradley on the attack, leading by seven. Tulsa straight up with that man-to-man -man defense, as we mentioned. Mitchell Anderson to the crowd, out to the outside, Winters. Rebound, Anderson inside with a turn, and a foul! Yes, it comes! Third personal foul on Paul Cressy. Wade Larvey and Bob Ortegel at Robertson Fieldhouse. That is the story. We're first half of play. Bradley has led by as many as 10 points at one juncture. And what would be termed an upset if Bradley could hang on throughout the second half? Missed free throw, rebounded by the Golden Hurricane. And this is Paul Pressy. The lead is nine. Bradley on top. Pressy from the foul line. Make the lead seven for Bradley now. Paul Pressy with eight points in the game. I think Coach Richardson would feel very good if he could get out of this half with Pressy not picking up that third foul. Donald Reese for the Braves is on the bench with three fouls. Barney Mines on the wing. Great basketball game, Wayne. It really is. Willie Scott on the weave to Anderson with the hook. Rebound Stewart inside. Pressy the outlet man and ahead it goes to Anderson. Here's the lead for Spradley. Bradley looking inside. Anderson trying to get down low to Stewart. The ball is picked off by third two. The Braves on the move, led by Scott. Mines from the corner. Badly the rebound with good position on Boise Winters. Bill Spradling takes it back the other way. Now Mike Anderson. A minute 30 to go, first half.
Anderson on the drive, won't go, the tap is there for Stewart. Stewart and Mitchell Anderson of Bradley fighting for the rebound as Stewart pokes it home. A great rebound and a very, very big basket with about a minute to play. Tulsa cuts it to five. Coming up on the 62nd mark, third kill gets it across. 57 seconds to go, first half. Bradley has led throughout. They currently enjoy a five-point advantage. Willie Scott. Down low on the drive. Score two for third kill and a foul. Number 12. The foul is on Stewart. It is personal foul number one on Greg Stewart. And it will send David third kill to the line. David third kill, heads to the free throw line, getting his first two points of the afternoon. Third kill eyes the bucket. And he completes the three-point play. Eight points the lead for Bradley with 46 seconds to go. We are first half of play at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. Anderson and Spradley. Moving across for Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane came in here ranked number eight in the nation. Both teams with 12 and three conference records. And Tulsa, it appears, will wait for one last shot. Bradley in a 2-3 zone. And the Hurricane will play the perimeter game until it gets down to around 10 seconds to go. There's the clock in the middle of your screen. Tulsa and Bradley. For all the marbles, regular season Missouri Valley Conference. And a guaranteed home floor berth. Now with 12 seconds to go, Tulsa heads into their offense. Bradley looking for the shot. Bradley from the outside. He's got it. And the lead has been sliced to six. Bill Bradley now with four points as time lines down. And this is the first half of play. 37-31. Our halftime score as they score that last field goal. And in a moment, we'll be joining my colleague Bob Ornigal down at the court with head coach Dick Versace as you watch the officials head off the floor here at the end of the first half of play. And a good ball game, and six points is the lead for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Let's get out to the floor and Bob Ornigal. We're down here talking with Coach Versace. Uh, Coach Versace, it looked like uh, defensively in the first half you were able to create a lot of problems for Tulsa with some kind of a combination defense. Can you tell us a little bit about it? No. <laughs> All right, I can understand that. It's most effective. What do you have to do in the second half to maintain this lead? Well, it just depends on whether they adjust to it or not. If they adjust to it, then we're going to try to adjust to their adjustment. If we can't do that, we might have to be a little more conventional. Uh, we seem to be able to handle uh, or the variety of defenses that you know that they're, they're noted for and we're doing a pretty good job there we certainly missed Reese in the first half it'd be nice to have him back in the second half thank you coach for coming by continued right, success bob. okay back to you wayne okay bob again the score at halftime 37 to 31 and we'll return to robertson fieldhouse peoria illinois after these messages And here's your room guarantee. And only Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or we'll make it right, no excuses, or that night you stay free. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain, not any one of them. And this guarantee comes from every one of us at Holiday Inn to you, because we want to take care of you. We give you a guarantee, not excuses. Pontiac announces cash bonuses on these exciting new Pontiacs. $750 on any Phoenix. $750 on any J2000. $500 on any T1000. And $500 on any Pontiac 6000. Just take delivery between now and March 31. Pontiac will send you a check. See your participating Pontiac dealer who's contributing to these bonuses. And let's get moving. Now the excitement really begins. What's more natural than natural light? Now I'm asking you, what could be more natural than natural light beer on the grand day of the wearing of the green? Ah, natural light from Anheuser-Busch. It's the beer with the taste for food and fun. Why, it's just the thing for the party, you know. 
on the day when everyone's Irish, give them a kiss. But before you do, ask them this. What's more natural than natural light? The Army has helped send more people to college than there are people in college today. People proud to have served, proud to have succeeded. Introducing the Army College Fund. For every dollar you put in, Uncle Sam puts in five or more. So after two years in the Army, you can have $15,200 for college. Call for your free booklet on the Army College Fund and be all you can be. We'll be back with the Bell System College Basketball Report after these messages from your local station. Sunday at a special time, Hodge and John make a false arrest. He's not drunk, he's deaf. On chips. Then it's 100 of the world's sexiest women in Bob Hope's Women I Love, Beautiful But Funny. And just when you thought it was safe to watch the tube, it's an all-new TV censored bloopers 3. It all happens Sunday on NBC. Check the outstanding values on the latest tap and microwaves with Browning Element. Now at Cohen's, downtown Peoria, Sheridan Village, and Pekin. You could win $1,000 or more in Thompson Food Basket's Jackpot Day Contest. We'll have a drawing every week on television, and if your name is drawn and you've had your card punched that week, you win. It's as simple as that, nothing to buy. If the name drawn has not had their card punched that week, then $500 is added to next week's jackpot. Why, you could be winning thousands of dollars, and it costs you nothing to enter or play. Just register at your nearby Thompson Food Basket store, pick up a set of the rules, and get your jackpot card. Win thousands of dollars in Thompson Food Basket's Jackpot Day Weekly Contest. Register today. Now you can do almost all your banking transactions by phone, the money phone, at one of the better banks, Dunlap, Wyoming, Glassford, or Bartonville. Just pick up your phone anywhere in the world and call your special money phone number 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and transfer funds from checking to savings, or vice versa. Make payments on loans, mortgages, or have someone call you the following day. Now there's another reason why we're known as the better banks, and there's one near you. Weekend Sports with Les Shapiro, tonight on 25. Sport is brought to you by the Bell System Yellow Pages. If you want to save time and energy, take the first step. Let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. Honey, that blue paint looks fine for our new house, but I don't think we brought enough with us. <laughs> yeah, and who knows if there's a custom paint store around here. D&W, paint and paint supplies. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks when your fingers do the walking. You save gas, money, and time. Al's Paint, corner of Oak and Third. We match colors. Looks like we've run out. That's okay, Dad. We'll just run out to the corner for some more. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We match colors. Let you... Wayne Larravee with Bob Hortigal. We are back in Peoria, Illinois. Robertson Fieldhouse. This is homecoming here at Bradley University. Now, they don't have a football team, so basketball is where they place homecoming. And what a weekend to have it with the... Uh, 8th ranked Tulsa in town of the Missouri Valley regular season championship at stake. It is a 6 point ball game in favor of the Bradley Braves. They have had leads of 8 and 10 points they have led from the outset. Here at halftime, Bob Ortigal is chatting with Missouri Valley Commissioner Dick Martin. Bob? With me is the Commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, Dick Martin. Dick, it's good to have you here. It's good to talk to you. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about the kind of year it's been uh, basketball-wise in this league? Well, as, as always, Bob, the Valley's very tough. Uh, very competitive. Uh, I feel that we've had the kind of year that we always have had. And you, when you were coach here, you know how the Valley is. This is typical today of the Great Valley basketball, and I'm just happy to be here. You know, at this time of the year, we get into a, a, a great deal of competitiveness concerning uh, various positions in hey, the Bob. conference and where you're going to finish. So you have a home court advantage in uh, something that came about a few years ago called postseason tournaments within the conference. How do administrators, commissioners of leagues, athletic directors, faculty representatives, how do they feel from a philosophical standpoint about conference postseason tournaments? Well, I think from a philosophical standpoint, Bob, it's a, the postseason tournament is necessary because you take the uh, fourth, fifth, sixth place teams in a conference, and if they're not having a good year early in February, they still have something to shoot for, so it keeps the competition on the kind of level we like to have it. Well, it certainly does, and I think from an administrative standpoint, uh, you guys probably feel pretty good about the additional revenue, too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, the, the revenue helps, and as you know, this day and time, Bobby, every bit of revenue helps our member institutions, and we really need to have it, and 
and a competitive level. Of course, uh, here at Bradley today, uh, everyone's looking forward to next week uh, for the conference tournament process to start. And of course, yesterday we had 16 different combinations that we were trying to work out, and we didn't know which way we were going to go, but today we'll know about 9 o'clock tonight. Well, certainly that revenue has to be a major factor. Uh, you know, with the rising costs in college athletics today, you'd hate to see something like this go by the wayside. Uh, this is what America's all about, and college basketball on NBC is something else. Thank you for your time, Dick. It's good to talk to you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. Back to you, Wayne. Okay, thank you, Bob and Dick. We'll have more halftime activities after this message from NBC. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire. Reminder, we'll be at the Athletic and Convocation Center on the campus of Notre Dame tomorrow. It should be an exceptional game. Notre Dame suffering through a losing year, but Digger Phelps every year picks one game. That's his personal crusade. He's aimed it at DePaul, one of the top-rated clubs in the country, featuring All-American Terry Cummings for Ray Myers' club. Notre Dame looking for a big upset. It would be their season against DePaul, looking ahead to the tournament tomorrow at 2 on NBC. Now let's take a look at some of the action in the Valley Thursday night. 50% at the Holman Center in Terre Haute, Indiana, the Indiana State Sycamore surprised the Drake Bulldogs 69 to 61. The Bulldogs fell behind early when fouls and an injury took two starters from the lineup. Early in the second half, Drake came back hard, pulling ahead of the Sycamores briefly. But a chilling cold spell at the line by Drake and some crisp outside shooting by Indiana State proved to be Drake's undoing. Drake falls to 7-8 and eight in the Valley, while Indiana State now has a 3-12 and 12 record in conference play. Jamie Smith and Lester Wright face the Sycamores with 19 points apiece. Later today, Drake plays at Southern Illinois, Creighton is at Illinois State, New Mexico State plays at West Texas State, and Wichita State travels to Indiana State. All right, that's what's coming up in the Valley. We are at halftime with the score 37 to 31. Bob Ortigal in a couple of minutes will be talking with head coach Nolan Richardson of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. But as of yet, the Golden Hurricane have not made their appearance on the floor here at halftime. So again, we'll uh, pause for a few minutes and take a look at maybe the leading scores. Boise winners, 10 points for Bradley. Paul Pressey, 8 points uh, for Tulsa. And uh, we'll be back with the full look at statistics and the second half of action coming up after these messages. We'll return to college basketball after these messages from your local station. Saturday. I'm asking you to the dance. It's double trouble when Grant says yes to two dates. There's two women. Then. <laughs> Stella goes on strike and Harper Valley's future's on the line. Then. The Mandrells welcome June and Johnny Cash. And Billy Crystal swings with Smokey Robinson Saturday. Check the outstanding values on tap and ranges and microwaves. Now in the appliance department at Cohen's, downtown Peoria, Sheridan Village, and Pekin. To this day, I'm still an authority on lightness. But not beer. So I drink Miller Lite. You call that light? The best thing is, it's got 96 calories. Perhaps extra light has only 70. Actually, the best thing is, it's not filling. This is less filling. Well, it's and our... more refreshing. Okay, Mitchell, uh, the best thing is, it pours light. <laughs> not light enough, Gordo. Extra light beer from Pabst. A refreshing change of beer. Sports Afield, Sunday afternoon on TV 25. Lo and Brown, when you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lo and Brown. By Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. By Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. And by the makers of Skoll, Copenhagen, and Happy Days, the smokeless tobacco. American Express presents... <laughs> 
I've discovered a cure for the common cold. The American Express card. Just take it to United Airlines and ask them to put you on their next flight to Hawaii. United says Hawaii's their little corner of the world. May I help you, sir? Oh, yes, you can. I'd like to go to... Uh, I'd like to go to... Uh, I'd like to go to... Uh, Hawaii! The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Here's two good friends. Wow. Tonight. Now I see why you guys dragged me up here. Ooh, hey. Hit them with the best parts. Bet the low umbrella's still cold. <laughs> you brought low umbrella all the way up here? No, 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 no. You did. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. You're not mad at us, are you, Pete? You're just lucky it was low and brow. Let it be low and brow. Tonight, the Martins are watching their whole world go up in flames. A home they may never get back. Allstate update. Home replacement guarantee. The Martins have homeowner's insurance, but they don't have Allstate's home replacement guarantee. It's better than inflation protection alone, because it guarantees Allstate will pay to totally rebuild your home, brick for brick, regardless of cost. Today, you need Allstate's home replacement guarantee. Another reason you're in good hands with Allstate. Coming up next is the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you near Pittsburgh, Kansas will be seeing Nebraska at Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, you'll see Minnesota at Iowa. And in Tulsa, you'll be watching Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Coming up next, here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. Take a look at some of the halftime stats. Leading scores, a correction from what we gave you a few moments ago. Paul Pressey, six points. Stewart also has six, and six points for Steve Harris of Tulsa. Ten points for Boise winners. Nine points, Barney Mines, and eight points for Mitchell Anderson. They are the three leading scores for the Bradley Braves. Coach? Well, it's, it's been a reasonably tight first half in some statistical areas, but uh, the outstanding one certainly, and the one indic indicative of the uh, difference in the score is the 44% that Tulsa is shooting, the 50% that Bradley is shooting, and certainly the rebounding statistic, 22 to 17. I really feel like the two fouls on Pressey had something to do with his being his normal self in the last 10 minutes of that first half. I don't think you'll see that here in this half. Bradley has played very, very well, very aggressively. Um, I am sure they will continue to play that way. It'll be a, a great second half, and, and I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to have to pick a winner in this one. Six points to lead here. Here's Georgetown. Trailing Connecticut by two. That game at halftime. 37 to 31. Bradley with the six point lead here. It'll be Tulsa basketball. Middle of your screen. Well, he was in the middle of your screen. We get a look from the baseline. That's the Bradley cheering section. And now the Tulsa Golden Hurricane put it in play. Phil Spradling and Paul Pressey. Spradling up high. That's Pressey in the corner. Anderson will fire. Well, the lead has been sliced to four. Mike Anderson comes out against the first two points of the second half. Bradley Braves. Willie Scott, guarded by Anderson. Scott to Mitchell Anderson. That's Boise winner. Tulsa opens play, Wayne, in a straight man-to-man -man defense. Bradley running their tee game, looking for the lob pass or the throw over the top to the shooter, as they did in the first half. This is third kill. Boise winners on the wing. Outside of Illinois State. Bottom. And there it is. Here it is, third kill, back door. They clear out the backside, take the help side defense out of there, maintain their patience, and eventually look for the lob or the throw over the top for the outside jumper. The alley oop down low, and Bradley connects inside. A beautiful feed from Mike Anderson. 39-35, Bradley. Braves on the attack. Scott with the pass to third kill. Dealing inside. Nicely done. He's got the first four points of the ball game for the Bradley Braves here in the second half. Coach Versace puts his defense back in the diamond we saw in the first half. The one he didn't want to comment on at the half. I don't blame him. He may have to play these people in a week. Bradley from the outside. Reach. Yates down the rebound. Willie Scott is the outlet man. Racing by Pressy. On the feed of Mitchell Anderson. Inside Boise winners. Third kill picks it up and he's fouled by Greg Stewart. On Greg Stewart, it is personal foul number two. It is the first on the team. 
We look at it again. The offensive rebound for third kill. Picks it up off the floor and goes up. Stewart gets called for the foul but from behind, and I did not see the contact. That may have been one that... Uh, I don't uh, think Nolan Richardson saw it either. That may have gone Bradley's way, but I'll tell you what, in the game of college basketball, the people are so big and so strong and so agile that those kind of things will happen. Now, those officials are going to miss one once in a while. They're human beings. Third kill puts it out as first. Bob, the point I was making a few moments ago, outside of Illinois State, Tulsa probably plays more man-to-man -man defense than anyone else in the Valley, maybe. Well, I think uh, Drake University along with Illinois State. Drake plays all man-to-man. -man. By the way, Drake University beat both of these teams in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, under first-year head coach Gary Garner, who's done a great job with that program. Anderson lifts and hits. Mike Anderson. Here come the Braves on the run. This is Mitchell Anderson. The rebound taken by Fandley. Mike Anderson plays ahead to Phil Spradley. Stewart in the lane. Stewart in traffic, and we're going to whistle. Foul is an offensive foul on Greg Stewart. That is the third on Stewart. It is the second on the team. We look at it again. It's a little hard to tell from that angle whether that was a charge or not. It was certainly close, but Greg Stewart's play here today I do not think has been up to par. Now, it may be in the next 18 minutes of action, but I really don't think he's been himself. He can't seem to get into the flow of the game, and if he does, things will change for Tulsa. Six points the lead for Bradley. Tulsa in the half-court pressure now. Reese has it knocked out of bounds by Stewart. It'll be Bradley ball, side court. Coming into the ball game, Herbert Johnson replacing Greg Stewart. Herbert Johnson had a field goal for two points in the first half of play. Stewart has three personal fouls. That's Donald Reese triggering on the inbound. Bottom of your screen. Mitchell Anderson, going to look at the two coaches standing up, directing traffic. Nolan Richardson closest. Third kill. Reese cross court to Scott. Scott trying to find the seam. That's third kill. He'll play cross court to Scott. Six points the lead. This is third kill. Make it eight points. Bradley on top. Strong move by David Third Kill. Largest lead of the afternoon. Ten points in the first half by Bradley. Now Pressy, his shot blocked by Third Kill. Third Kill takes Pressy to the floor. And the foul coming up on David Third Kill. That is personal foul number two on Third Kill. It is the first on the team in the second half of play. And everybody in Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse here in Peoria, Illinois, knew that that was a foul. There certainly wasn't any, any question about it. Pressy will get a chance to shoot two. He's been struggling a little bit lately at the free throw line. He's been talking about it. Um, it's something that has not been a secret. Straight through on the first, he had a great game from the free throw line against Wichita State earlier this season, a couple of weeks ago, and a victory at Wichita, but since has been on. There's his percentage, 66.3. Tulsa hangs in there, still only back six. Reese, as he tries to inbound it, I believe he uh, tripped over the wiring from our cameraman on the baseline. They'll let him do it again. Reese will toss in. This, however, gives Tulsa time to set up a full court defense. The people are booing, but believe me, they'd rather have this basketball game on television from their field house than they would to uh, have that gentleman someplace else. <laughs> All right, Reese will toss in. Pressy guards on the inbounds. A long lead pass for winners, and they overshot him out of play. Wayne, let's remember that play. With 17.06 on the clock and a six point lead, Tulsa got the ball back underneath their basket. That could be a very, very key play and a turning point in this second half. Paul Pressy will toss in. He has the wingspan of a 747. Gets it into Johnson. Herbert Johnson in the corner. Freshman out of Midland, Texas. Mike Anderson will reload the offense. Paul Pressy from the point. He's like a coach on the floor. He really is. He's very, very talented. To, he's got great poise. Anderson, the open jumper. Yeah! See, they capitalize on that turnover by Bradley. Seven points for Mike Anderson. Four points for the lead for Bradley. Winners out of the corner over Spradley. The rebound pulled down by Herbert Johnson. Mike Anderson on the run through traffic. Anderson to Pressy. And Pressy on the drive will be called for steps. 
Turnover, Tulsa, Bradley Ball. We've got a break of the action. 16 minutes, 26 seconds to go. At Robertson Fieldhouse and Bradley, leading Tulsa 45 to 41. We'll be back after these messages. When I'm not making music with the Charlie Daniels Band, you'll find me here at home in Tennessee. And where you find me, you'll find my skull. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum, and it sure feels good. In fact, I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And my place here, <laughs> that's something I just can't get too much of. Enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Try Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. GMC brings you the GMC Cash Bonus Plan. You can get a $500 cash bonus on a new GMC S15 pickup. Get a $750 cash bonus on new GMC full-size pickups, GMC vans, jimmies, suburbans, or any other light-duty GMCs. See your participating GMC truck dealer. He can put a new GMC truck in your hands and money in your pocket. The GMC Cash Bonus Plan. It's the break you've been waiting for. We got them all. That means it's Miller time. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. The explosive Blue Demons of the Paul battle the resurging Fighting Irish. Then, Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Plus, the All-Stars and the Pro Stars go down to the wire for the World Championship and Women's Pro World Cup surfing tomorrow. Quite a ball game with 16.26 to go, second half. Wayne, uh, Tulsa closing the gap a little bit. Uh, Bradley is 20 for 40 from the field. Tulsa was considerably below that in shooting, but they are now 18 for 37, while the rebounding edge still goes to the Bradley Braves at 26-19. And it's Bradley ball. Mitchell Anderson will play cross court to Willie Scott. Braves move it across the midcourt stripe, as you can see from left to right across your screen. This is third kill, double teamed. Donald Reese way out front. Now Willie Scott. Bradley has led throughout the ball game every step of the way. Their largest lead has been 10. Boise winners shakes loose to the baseline. What a move! Didn't look like a freshman, I'll tell you that. But at this point in the season, you're no longer a freshman. You ought to be an experienced player. Great job by winners. Bill Spradling from the outside attempts to quiet the crowd, but cannot do it. And Mitchell Anderson clears the board. Willie Scott gets by pressing. Sends to the corner winner. Yes! go back to the first shot that he took in the ball game that went down for him. The alley-oop inside of Vanley deflected away by Winters and the foul on Boise Winters. That is his first personal foul. It is the second on the team. We get a look here again. Winters getting up off the floor trying to regain the defensive position in front of the offensive player. When he couldn't get it, he made a freshman mistake there and tried to reach over the back making contact, drawing the foul. But certainly a, a guy that's just played very, very well. Could be the difference in the ball game so far. Tulsa trailing by eight. They are the eighth ranked team in the nation. Pressing. Mike Anderson. Here's Pressing. A rebound, Herbert Johnson in the lane. He is hit as he turns by Willie Scott. And the foul on Willie Scott is his third. It is the third on the team. Non-shooting affair. We get a look here. Herbert Johnson high in the air. Takes it away from his teammate, Phil Spradling. Willie Scott reaching in, trying to knock the ball loose. Draws the foul. Tulsa we, trying to hang close. They are within shouting distance, trailing by eight. We need to mention that Willie Scott and Donald Reese both with three fouls. Steve Harris, the freshman, right there with his jumper from 15 feet away. Six points the lead for Bradley. Some full court pressure. Light pressure in the backcourt being exerted by Tulsa. Reese takes the lead pass, pulls over Harris, no foul called. Here's Willie Scott. He takes it back outside and they reload the offense. 14 44 to go in the game. Winner slipping inside to Reese on the drive. Rebound Reese stays right with it. A great block by Johnson. A close up of Reese able to hang on. 
Good points for Donald Reese. In the corner, Cressy. Back outside of Anderson. Harris in the corner, right side of the basket. Tulsa taking their time. Crowd roaring. Well, they the upset. In the corner, Mike Anderson. Anderson quiets the crowd with a 20 footer. Bradley on top, leading by six. Winners on the drive. Once again is eight and Boise winners have 16 points. Bradley tries for the upset of eighth ranked Tulsa. And they can smell it, Wayne. You can see it. The crowd feels the same way. But Tulsa will not crack. They're too strong. Harris plays to Pressey. Pressey looks to the bench. Nolan Richardson wants a timeout. We have a break in the action with 13 minutes and 39 seconds left to be played in the ball game. And that is the story. We'll be back at Robertson Fieldhouse after these messages. I didn't know that. I'm absolutely shocked. I'm surprised because I've always thought that Michelin were the top tires. These Michelin owners have heard the big news about the Uniroyal Steeler. On a government prescribed course, Uniroyal rates its Steeler to deliver at least 20% more mileage than Michelin's ratings. At least 20% more mileage with Steelers. That's the big surprise. I might buy him. In fact, I will buy him. The Uniroyal Steeler. We give you more to go on. I'm surprised. I really am. For special offers on American-made tools, come to your participating hardware or home center store's great All-American Workshop sale. Buy Black & Decker 7 and a quarter inch two-horsepower circular saw and get a Black & Decker electric stapler free. Buy this Weller soldering iron with free accessories. Or buy this Lufkin measuring tape and get a six-foot tape free. Choose an SK quality wrench or socket set, metric or standard, and get this magnetic screwdriver set free. They're just some of the specials now at your hardware home center store during the great All-American Workshop Sale. Be ringside as Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Then the All-Stars and the Pro Stars go down to the wire in a team skate off of the World Championship, plus Women's Pro World Cup surfing on NBC Sports World tomorrow. The Bradley Braves have made four of their last five shots from the field. And they've got the lead by eight points with 13.39 to go. You get a look at Coach Nolan Richardson. What a job he has done at Tulsa, 47 and 11 in his second season. Took that ball club to the NIT. There's the Bradley cheering section. And oh, we have heard from them here today, Bob Ortigal. Well, they certainly have... Uh been great in terms of enthusiasm, but then it would be the same way if this game was being played in Tulsa. That's the way it is in the Missouri Valley Conference. Steve Harris from the outside, the rebound. Mitchell Anderson trying to keep it alive, but Pressy comes up with it, the ball slapped out of bounds, and we've got a foul down low. And that is number four if that is on Scott, and that could be costly to the Braves. It is on Willie Scott, his fourth. He is the man that makes the show go offensively. Tremendous quickness. Once again, he, he picked up his third foul. The way he picks up this one here, that's his fourth right there, reaching in, being aggressive, trying to get the ball back. But that's not always an intelligent play when you have two or three fouls on you. Fourth team foul on Bradley. Tulsa trying to hang in this one. They trail 53-45. 13-16 left to go. The clock will become important in the next couple of minutes. Tulsa has trailed every step of the way. They are the eighth-ranked team of the nation. Bradley trying for the upset. Coming off their worst performance of the season Thursday night at a loss to Creighton. Golden Hurricane of Tulsa on the attack, taking their time against that zone defense by Bradley. Harris fires over the zone, and he's got two more. Six points the lead for Bradley. Scott Billy's will have on the run. Excuse me, Wayne. Scott will have to be careful now with those four fouls that he doesn't pick up a cheap one charging or something like that. It could really affect the young man mentally. This is David Thirdkill, plays to the point man, Willie Scott. Transfer out of Hillsdale College. Tulsa has gone away from the half-court zone pressure to man-to-man -to -man pressure. There's a steal. steal by the freshman Harris. He's all alone. And suddenly it is down to a four-point Bradley lead. Harris has 12 points. Again, it's that Tulsa bench that plays such a key role every time the Golden Hurricane take the floor. Reese, the double team, gets it away to Willie Scott. Scott misses the open jumper and Bandley the rebound. Steve Harris, Tulsa could climb back to within two. 
11.54 to go. Pressing at the point. That's Mike Anderson back to pressing. Tulsa again, taking their time. The alley oop down low and a hip pressing play. Anderson to pull pressing. We've seen it before. We've seen Anderson do that with pressing before. You won't see a better play in the country today than that one. Willie Scott for Bradley. The Braves coaching staff wants a timeout. They'll talk things over with 11 minutes and 25 seconds left to go. Their eight-point second-half lead has been sliced down to two. Nick Versace. It'd be great if we could see that. Oh, we can. That's good. Here's that great pass by Anderson. It's the alley-oop lob pass over the top of the Bradley defense. Pressy takes it out of the air with two hands and dunks it with authority. That's Not only a great pass, Wayne, but an example of the great hands that Paul Pressy has. Nick Versace talking things over with his group. The Bradley Braves are leading by two at 53 to 51. We'll be back after these messages. When you shoot a lot of pool and bars, you want to stay fast and loose. And you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think pool is strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Business is so quiet. You could read the books here. That book by the phone can help. The Bell System Yellow Pages. Free parking, free delivery. That's Fred. Fred's furniture next door. Oh, he does a great business. Where beautiful hair is a tradition. That's Miss Claire. <laughs> oh, is she busy? Sure. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks to people when they let their fingers do the walking and are ready to talk business. I'm ready. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We're big on books. Let your fingers do the walking. The lead is two for the Bradley Braves over Tulsa, and we have 11.25 to go. Statistically, Wayne, Tulsa almost back to 50% at 23 for 45. Bradley at 24 for 46. Interestingly enough, Bradley has shot eight free throws. Tulsa nine. They both made five. Donald Reese in the corner. Bradley on the attack. The Braves trying for the upset of the nation's eighth-ranked team. Third kill, the Boise Winners, who's been a hot man for Bradley. Donald Reese in the corner. That's third kill out front. Bradley taking their time. Tulsa appears to be a man to man, straight man to man. Donald Reese guarded by Bradley. Reese has not been a big man offensively for Bradley here today, Bob, and I'm a little surprised. Well, the foul situation has certainly been a factor, and the other reason is that Reese is not playing inside. Reese with the finger roll. Reese gets it back. He's been out on the wing a lot because Bradley's been posting Anderson because Pressy is guarding Anderson, and they're trying to get Pressy in foul trouble. Reese has five points. The lead again is four for Bradley. Coming up on the 10-minute mark, second half. We've got a whistle down low on the foul on the freshman Boise Winters away from the ball. Ron Zetcher comes over to make the call. That is the second on Boise Winters. It is the fifth on the team and on shooting it there. Tulsa will trigger from the baseline, left side of the bucket. We get a good look at it here. We can see the pass. You can see that Winters, as he spins around the man, throws an elbow just prior to that time. That's what he got called for. Back line, Mike Anderson out at the point for Tulsa. Ball pressing number 25. The intensity is tremendous. You can just feel the tension. The alley up to Presley in traffic. He was hit in a foul coming up on Bradley. I believe that foul is going against Donald Reese. It is against Reese, and that is his fourth. It is the sixth on the team. Here it is again. We see what we saw a little earlier. The lob pass by Anderson over the top of the Bradley defense. Presley attempts to take it out of the air, but is fouled in the process. The key... Reese's fourth foul, Willie Scott with four fouls. Bradley has two fine players with four fouls. Will be a determining factor in the game, I think. Steve Harris trying to slip inside on Boise Winters. Can't do it. Mike Anderson for Tulsa. A high bounce pass to Badley for the turn. Nicely done. The sophomore, Bruce Badley, able to connect inside. And may be the most improved player in the Missouri Valley Conference. The guy has really come along when David Brown went down. Third kill bottled up. Willie Scott. 
Bradley works the perimeter. Anderson inside. Back to Reese, spinning toward the bucket. Willie Scott to Reese inside. He's fouled by Bradley. The sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. On uh, Bruce Bradley, that is his first personal foul. It is the sixth on the team. That time, Reese came across the lane and posted low, something he hasn't been doing a lot of. We see the pass inside to him. When he makes the move on the baseline and goes up strong, he is fouled from behind by 53, Bruce Vanley. Make it three team fouls, not six, three team fouls on Tulsa. Bradley has 16 fouls. Donald Reese misses his first and he'll have another. Reese has had his problems this afternoon at the free throw line. Reese, a senior from Chicago, Illinois. High points of the game. I mentioned it earlier, Wayne. I'll mention it again. It would be criminal criminal if Bradley and Tulsa were not in the NCAA tournament. Both of them belong there. Stewart the rebound. Two-point lead for Bradley. Bradley ties it up. Great pass by Pressy. We are tied with nine minutes and 12 seconds to go. Tulsa has fought back from a 10-point deficit. Third kill inside from Winters and a foul on Steve Harris who picked him up late on the play. Personal foul number one on Steve Harris, a freshman from Blue Springs. That is the fourth on Tulsa. A good look at Coach Versace. I, I hope our viewers saw, and there's Coach Richardson from Tulsa. I hope our viewers saw what Pressy did that time. When the young freshman Harris committed the foul, Pressy went right to him, shook his hand, patted him on the backside. And that does a great deal when an All-American does that to a freshman. It settles that young man down, and that's, that's how Pressy has such a great influence on his teammates. Bradley works the perimeter. It appears to be a 2-3 zone for Tulsa at this point, Coach. Tulsa goes to that straight 2-3 zone against that out-of-bounds play. Mitchell Anderson bottled up in the corner, gets it to David Third. Gill spinning to the bucket, Adam slapped away. Now Winters with it. Winters has it popped away by Harris, and Harris able to recover. The crowd wanted a traveling violation on Harris, but Ron Zetcher, the official on top of the play, did not call one. Here's Harris from the outside. And with eight minutes and 25 seconds to go in the ball game, Tulsa leads for the first time this afternoon. Here's a steal by Anderson away from Scott. Anderson the shovel ahead for Harris. What a play by Anderson. He changed, I can't believe he caught Scott from the back from the backside. Anderson Great steal. With 16 points, and Tulsa has stormed the head by four. With eight minutes and 13 seconds left to go, we'll return to Robertson Fieldhouse after these messages. Volkswagen introduces the amazing new Quantum. German technology that is bound to be copied. Other makers will scrutinize Quantum's patented thinking axle, hoping to unlock the secret to its agility. They'll analyze Quantum's aerodynamics, seeking a clue to its economy. They'll even burrow into Quantum's comfortable interior. Five years from now, how will you tell the original from a copy? Look right here. In northwest Montana, up by Hungry Horse and Lone Pine, sits Whitefish. It's a long way to anywhere from Whitefish. So when the railroad needed computer equipment here, Honeywell was the choice. A Honeywell system may not need service often, Have a nice trip. but there's a Honeywell service engineer to come take care of it. Hey, how are you, Wayne? How you doing? Even in Whitefish. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. After four exciting weeks, the grand finale, the competition between the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars goes down to the wire. A unique team skate-off to decide the title of the World Pro Figure Skating Championship on NBC Sports World tomorrow. Tomorrow at NBC Sports World is a USBA Championship fight as title holder Frank the Animal Fletcher meets challenger Tony Braxton in a live scheduled 12 rounder from Atlantic City. Plus the final of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship and the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship from Oahu, Hawaii Scenic North Shore. Starting at 3 Central Time tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Bradley trailing by four, Braves on the attack, and Stewart knocks the ball away from Boise Winters out of bounds. It'll be Bradley ball at side court. Wayne, this is more than just a great college basketball game. This is big league all the way. It really is a good look at Coach Versace there. Both teams doing an excellent job. I told you Tulsa wouldn't crack when they were behind, and Bradley won't do it either. 
just both very well coached, great athletes. They have good young players and they have good seniors. Willie Scott running the offense to Mitchell Anderson. Anderson backs into Pressy, no foul call. Willie Scott across the way. Willie Scott has eight points. The lead has been sliced to two with Tulsa on top. Oh, we've got one right now. Here's Harris. Comes up short as it rattles in and out. The rebound batted at a foul. Foul coming up against Tulsa, either Badley or Stewart. It is going to be on Greg Stewart. A pushing foul on the rebound. That's his fourth. Let's see if we can spot that one, Coach. Well, Bradley's got the inside position on the board, certainly. And you can see there that contact was made while the ball was in the air. Both rebounders going for the ball. I think it's an honest foul, but it doesn't matter whether it's honest or dishonest. It's a foul. Five team fouls on Tulsa with 7.36 to go. Bradley could tie the ball game with a field goal here. Willie Scott on the wing. Reese at the foul line. Wayne, I don't know whether this is official or not, but they tell me that Paul Pressey has broken the assist record at Tulsa. He currently has 11. Here's Anderson. The tap is Mega. Reese gets it back. Return. 7.07 left to go, and we are tied at 59. Tulsa on the attack. Stewart with the hook in the lane. The rebound put for, and it's Donald Reese. He comes out of the pack with it. Willie Scott goes it across. The field house, Robertson field house. They're on their feet. At Robertson field house, Bradley University of Peoria, Illinois. The score, 59 apiece. Tulsa and Bradley are tied. I'm Wayne Larrow. He wouldn't be as Bob Ortigal. It's been a closely contested second half. Bradley led pretty much throughout the ball game. Tulsa, a few moments ago, had a four-point lead. Third kill on the drive is followed by Bradley. And David Third kill will go to the free throw line for Bradley. We are tied at 59. Second personal foul on Bruce Bradley. That is the sixth on the team. Very good execution that time on Bradley's part. Running their T game. Here you see the lob pass on the T game to David Third kill. He's got the easy layup. That's not a real bad play on Bradley's part. When you know that a young man has a sure two points, if you are not in foul trouble, you might as well go ahead and make him make the two free throws. Coach Richardson's going to add to that right now, try to psych him a little with the timeout. We've got a timeout on the floor with 6.27 left to be played, and a tie score at 59 apiece. There's a look at the Bradley Brave. A lot of fun in the final regular scheduled game. Men's basketball here at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. I tell you, they're loving it. And what a game we've got. Well, there's been a lot of history here over the years, Wayne. Uh, been a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches, and a lot of great Bradley basketball teams, as well as some great visiting teams. But I, you know, I, I don't know that any game uh, has been any better than this one. Well, certainly, certainly some of them, Wayne, have been as good, but this is just a, a superb college basketball game. You have coached here. You've also played here as a player. This was your home arena with the Bradley Braves. The raised floor, the crowd on top of the action. It's got to be a big advantage for the home team. Well, it, it is a big advantage, which, which means you just have to look at the Tulsa team and give them a, a whole lot of credit because uh, there's six and a half minutes to play and the score is tied. So they've been fighting against that advantage and been able to handle the crowd as well as a, a very fine Bradley team. And uh, this last, I, I hope this thing never ends. This is fun. 6.27 to go. You saw the timeout situation. There'll be a lot of coaching in the next six minutes and 27 seconds. David Third kill right now at the line for two shots. He has 10 points in the ball game. A senior, St. Louis, Missouri. It's a shame someone has to lose this game. Bradley leads by a point. He can make it two if he converts. A hush over the crowd here. Herbert Johnson, the rebound for Tulsa. Paul Pressey already today, the All-American candidate, has set a school record with 11 assists. The other night he had eight steals. That set a Tulsa school record. He is just rewriting the Tulsa record book. Bradley in his own defense. Tulsa sets up to attack. Steve Harris, he's the man you want. 
When they're in a zone defense, you'll find Tulsa go to Steve Harris from the outside. Harris now with 18 points in the game on the inbounds. We've got a foul coming up against the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Bruce Badley. That is the third on Badley. The pass comes inbounds to David Thirdkill. Maybe we can get a look at it here, Wayne. And when the interior, the pass was made inside to third kill, Manley a little bit out of position. An obvious foul right there. You know, we need to mention that there's two freshmen in this game, Wayne. Harris for Tulsa has 18 points, while Voicey Winters out of Chicago for the Bradley Braves has 16 points. Can you imagine uh, the future that they have in the Missouri Valley Conference? And that tells you what lies ahead for this league. Both teams are over the foul limit. Third kill, one and one opportunity. We are tied at 61. He can break the deadlock. He has 12 points. David, third kill. This time the rebound to Badley. Anderson plays ahead to Harris. Harris has 18 points. Harris will shoot anybody out of the zone defense. Ball Pressy from the point. Bradley appears to stick with that 2-3 zone. The alley-oop down the middle of the baseline. Tipped away. Taken by Bradley. He cannot convert, but a foul is called inside. Ron Setcher with the call. The foul is on Boise Winters. That is the third on Boise Winters. Bradley did a very good defensive job that time. You see, against the lob pass that Tulsa has been successful with, Bradley did a good defensive job. Tulsa... Got a break. They got the right bounce that time. The ball came back to him. Vanley draws the foul, going strong to the basket. 66, actually 65.7, but in the neighborhood, 66% from the line. He has eight points here today. Tulsa has struggled a bit as a team from the free throw line. He missed two. Mitchell Anderson the rebound. We're still tied at 61 apiece. 5.35 to go. Donald Reese to Anderson. Willie Scott. In the corner, Mitchell Anderson. Very seldom will he take a bad shot. David Third kill, number 35 on your screen. You get a look at the action from the baseline. It'll be interesting to see if... If either team gets hesitant, I think Coach Versace sensed that his team was a little hesitant and a little bit confused. I think that's an excellent call on his part, taking the timeout to tell him exactly what he wants. And there is Nolan Richardson, and he will be talking things over with his Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Tulsa, the eighth-ranked team in the nation, and the Bradley Brave, a lot to stop about here today. If we get a look at the, uh, the timeout of Tulsa once again, we'll, I'll point out to... The temperament that's constantly maintained by Coach Richardson when he talks to his players. That is carried over to the floor. I think that's what enables that team, when they are behind, to hang in there and, and not to panic. Certainly we see the same thing uh, on the side of the, the Bradley basketball team, but it's been a strength for Tulsa all year. We have seen them behind before, and they have been able to maintain their composure as a result of their leader, Nolan Richardson. Each team has two timeouts remaining with 5.07 to go. Coming up next is the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you near Pittsburgh, Kansas, will be seeing Nebraska at Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, you'll see Minnesota at Iowa. And at Tulsa, you'll watch Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. That's coming up next here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. Wayne Laramie and Bob Ortigal, we're at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. Tulsa and Bradley for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. 61 apiece, we are tied as you get a look at Nolan Richardson in the polka dot shirt. Flashy dresser, isn't it, Coach? Well, he really is. Uh, at this point, I think it's going to be interesting to take note of what happens here now in terms of strategy. What did Dick Versace have to say to eliminate some of the hesitancy offensively? Tipped away by Johnson, taken by Pressy to Johnson, the freshman spinning in the backcourt. Now baseline for the pop, way off the mark. Winners the rebound, it's Bradley Ball. Winners double team to the backcourt, has it taken away by Anderson. He can't convert on the drive. Boise Winters gets it back and dribbles out of traffic. Plays ahead for Mitchell Anderson who has to chase down the ball, bat it away, knocked out of bounds by Steve Harris, and it will be Bradley basketball. So the action sloppy on the sequence, but Bradley retains possession. They're going to get a little tense right now, Wayne. They really are at this point in the ballgame. There's so much at stake. 
we get a, a very good look there at both coaches. Great camera work when you can get a look at both guys, seeing how they, they make their big money. Scott, cross court, third kill, Reese up high, baseline, back door, and the hook. Give credit to the pass. Great pass to Anderson, and a stuff. Mitchell has had it. Bradley leads by a field goal. Tulsa, good tie. 4.16 to go. Ball pressing. Mike Anderson in the corner. Harris comes up short. Reese controlling the rebound for Bradley. Reese is double teamed and he's fouled. Fouled by Steve Harris. On Harris, that'll be personal foul. Number two, both sides are over the foul limit. Tulsa comes at Reese on the recovery here with a trap. Cressy and Harris, number 20. Harris reaches in with his right arm and draws the foul there. Much to the chagrin of that man, Nolan Richardson, and Donald Reese, number 50 at the free throw line. Reese has seven points here today. His team leading by two. Let's give Reese and Scott a lot of credit for the Bradley Braves. They've played a long way with four fouls apiece. One and one opportunity. The lead becomes three, and he can make it four. Bradley on top, trying for the upset of the nation's eighth-ranked team, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Donald Reese, senior. Chicago, Illinois. Four points the lead for Bradley over Tulsa. Two very big free throws by Donald Reese. Paul Pressey at the point. Steve Harris on the wing. Anderson in the corner. Paul Pressey sets things up. Harris had a shot momentarily. Now he works to the point. They reload blow the offense. There's the time. Second half of play. Can of defense for this crowd. The 28th consecutive sellout at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. This crowd roaring for the Bradley defense. Anderson quiets the crowd. Mike Anderson, he was yes, filled sir. after the shot. Score the field goal. And the foul coming up on David Third Kill. And his three on third kill. And it will send Mike Anderson to the free throw line for a one-and-one -one opportunity, and they score the field goal. Now, the foul occurred after the shot, and that's what Dick Versace is checking out of the bottom of your screen. I wish we could get a look at that again. You know, when a young man takes a shot from outside like that, you have a tendency to follow the flight of the ball. That's only natural. After that shot was taken by Anderson, contact was made by third kill. Consequently, the basket counts and he gets the one and one. He can tie the ball game at 65 apiece if he converts right here. He has 10 points in the contest so far today. We have three minutes and 21 seconds left to be played. Mike Anderson, a senior, Birmingham, Alabama. The ball game is tied with 3.21 to go. Bradley Braves receiving some pressure in the backcourt for Paul Preston, number 25. Third kill gives up his dribble. Willie Scott takes it across. Davis third kill. Third kill looking for help. Wheels out of traffic. Plays to Willie Scott. Anderson bats it away and is called for the foul as he bumps the third kill. Mike Anderson hit with personal foul number two. And as we've been saying, the one and one situation in effect for both teams. Al Anderson gambled and went off the went after the steal, but he's got a good shot at it. I think it was a very good gamble, an intelligent play. He gets the foul call against him as third kill goes to the floor. We're seeing a little bit of everything here. Coach Richardson trying to get a timeout. He cannot get the attention of his players. He must get it before the free throw shooter gets the ball, and he does. Timeout on the floor. Three minutes and three seconds left to be played here at Robertson Fieldhouse. In Peoria, Illinois, as the Tulsa Golden Hurricane surround their head coach, Nolan Richardson. We're coming back to Robertson after these messages. New Backwoods Smokes just hit town. Looking wild, but tasting mild. New Backwoods Smokes, how can anything that looks 
look so wild, taste so mild, new backwards smiles. How can anything that looks so wild? Backwood Smokes, all natural tobacco, hand rolled look in a keep em fresh pocket pouch. I'll get anything that looks so wild, tastes so mild. What's more natural than natural light? Now I'm asking you, what could be more natural than natural light beer on the grand day of the wearing of the green? Ah, natural light from Anheuser Busch. It's the beer with the taste for food and fun. Why, it's just the thing for the party, you know. On the day when everyone's Irish, give them a kiss. But before you do, ask them this. What's more natural than natural? Wayne Larravee with Bob Ortigal. We are back in Peoria, Illinois. Robertson Fieldhouse. This is homecoming here at Bradley University. Now, they don't have a football team, so basketball is where they place homecoming. And what a weekend to have it with the eighth-ranked Tulsa in town of the Missouri Valley regular season championship at stake. It is a six-point ball game in favor of the Bradley Braves. They have had leads of eight and ten points they have led from the outset. Here at halftime, Bob Ortigal is chatting with Missouri Valley Commissioner Dick Martin. Bob? With me is the Commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, Dick Martin. Dick, it's good to have you here. It's good to talk to you. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about the kind of year it's been uh, basketball-wise in this league? Well, as, as always, Bob, the Valley's very tough, uh, very competitive. Uh, I feel that we've had the kind of year that we always have had. And you, when you were coach here, you know how the Valley is. This is typical today of the great Valley basketball, and I'm just happy to be here. You know, at this time of the year, we get into a... Uh, a great deal of competitiveness concerning uh, various positions in hey, the Bob. conference and where you're going to finish so you have a home court advantage in uh, something that came about a few years ago called postseason tournaments within the conference. How do administrators, commissioners of leagues, athletic directors, faculty representatives, how do they feel from a philosophical standpoint about conference postseason tournaments? Well, I think from a philosophical standpoint, Bob, it's a the postseason tournament is necessary because you take the uh, fourth, fifth, sixth place teams in a conference and if they're not having a good year early in February, they still have something to shoot for. So it keeps the competition on the kind of level we like to have it. Well, it certainly does. And I think from an administrative standpoint, uh, you guys probably feel pretty good about the additional revenue too, don't yeah, you? The, the revenue helps. And as you know, this day and time, Bobby, every bit of revenue helps our member institutions and we really need to have it. And, and a competitive level, of course, uh, here at Bradley today, uh, everyone's looking forward to next week uh, for the conference tournament process to start. And of course, yesterday we had 16 different combinations that we were trying to work out, and we didn't know which way we were going to go, but today we'll know about 9 o'clock tonight. Well, certainly that revenue has to be a major factor. Uh, you know, with the rising costs in college athletics today, you'd hate to see something like this go by the wayside. Uh, this is what America's all about, and college basketball on NBC is something else. Thank you for your time, Dick. It's good to talk to you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. Back to you, Wayne. Okay, thank you, Bob and Dick. We'll have more halftime activities after this message from NBC. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire. Reminder, we'll be at the Athletic and Convocation Center on the campus of Notre Dame tomorrow. It should be an exceptional game. Notre Dame suffering through a losing year, but Digger Phelps every year picks one game. That's his personal crusade. He's aimed it at DePaul, one of the top-rated clubs in the country, featuring All-American Terry Cummings for Ray Myers Club. Notre Dame looking for a big upset. It would be their season against DePaul, looking ahead to the tournament tomorrow at 2 on NBC. Now let's take a look at some of the action in the Valley Thursday night. 50% at the Holman Center in Terre Haute, Indiana, the Indiana State Sycamore surprised the Drake Bulldogs 69-61. The Bulldogs fell behind early when fouls and an injury took two starters from the lineup. Early in the second half, Drake came back hard, pulling ahead of the Sycamores briefly. But a chilling cold spell at the line by Drake and some crisp outside shooting by Indiana State proved to be Drake's undoing. Drake falls to 7-8 and eight in the Valley, while Indiana State now has a 3-12 and 12 record in conference play. Jamie Smith and Lester Wright face the Sycamores with 19 points apiece. Later today, Drake plays at Southern Illinois, Creighton is at Illinois State, New Mexico State plays at West Texas State, and Wichita State travels to Indiana State. All right, that's what's coming up in the Valley. We are at halftime with the score 37-31. Bob Ortigal in a couple of minutes will be talking with 
head coach uh, Nolan Richardson of uh, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, but as of yet, the Golden Hurricane have not made their appearance on the floor here at halftime. So, again, we'll uh, pause for a few minutes and uh, take a look at maybe the leading scores. Boise winners, 10 points for Bradley. Paul Pressey, 8 points uh, for Tulsa. And uh, we'll be back with the full look at statistics and the second half of action coming up after these messages. We'll return to college basketball after these messages from your local station. Saturday. I'm asking you to the dance. It's double trouble when Grant says yes to two dates. There's two women. Then. <laughs> Stella goes on strike and Harper Valley's future's on the line. Then. The Mandrells welcome June and Johnny Cash. And Billy Crystal swings with Smokey Robinson Saturday. Check the outstanding values on tap and ranges and microwaves. Now in the appliance department at Cohen's, downtown Peoria, Sheridan Village, and Pekin. To this day, I'm still an authority on lightness. But not beer. So I drink Miller Lite. You call that light? The best thing is, it's got 96 calories. Perhaps extra light has only 70. Actually, the best thing is, it's not filling. This is less filling. Well, it's and our... more refreshing. Okay, Mitchell, uh, the best thing is, it pours light. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Not light enough, Gordo. <laughs> extra light beer from Pabst. A refreshing change of beer. Sports Afield, Sunday afternoon on TV 25. Low and proud. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be low and proud. By Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. By Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. And by the makers of Skoll, Copenhagen, and Happy Days, the smokeless tobacco. American Express presents... I've discovered a cure for the common cold. The American Express card. Just take it to United Airlines and ask them to put you on their next flight to Hawaii. United says Hawaii's their little corner of the world. May I help you, sir? Oh, yes, you can. I'd like to go to... I'd like to go to... I'd like to go to... Hawaii! The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Here's two good friends. Wow. Tonight. Now I see why you guys dragged me up here. Ooh, hey. Hit him with the best parts. Bet the low and brow still calls. <laughs> you brought low and brow all the way up here? No, 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 no. You did. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. You're not mad at us, are you, Pete? You're just lucky it was low and brow. Let it be low and brow. Tonight, the Martins are watching their whole world go up in flames. A home they may never get back. All-state update. Home replacement guarantee. The Martins have homeowner's insurance, but they don't have All-state's home replacement guarantee. It's better than inflation protection alone, because it guarantees All-state will pay to totally rebuild your home, brick for brick, regardless of cost. Today, you need All-state's home replacement guarantee. Another reason you're in good hands with All-state. Coming up next is the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you near Pittsburgh, Kansas will be seeing Nebraska at Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, you'll see Minnesota at Iowa. And in Tulsa, you'll be watching Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Coming up next, here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. Take a look at some of the halftime stats. Leading scores, a correction from what we gave you a few moments ago. Paul Pressey, six points. Stewart also has six, and six points for Steve Harris of Tulsa. Ten points for Boise winners. Nine points, Barney Mines, and eight points for Mitchell Anderson. They are the three leading scores for the Bradley Braves. Coach? Well, it's, it's been a reasonably tight first half in some statistical areas, but uh, the outstanding one certainly, and the one indic indicative of the uh, difference in the score is the 44% that 
Tulsa is shooting, the 50% that Bradley is shooting, and certainly the rebounding statistic, 22 to 17. I really feel like the two fouls on Pressey had something to do with his being his normal self in the last 10 minutes of that first half. I don't think you'll see that here in this half. Bradley has played very, very well, very aggressively. Um, I am sure they will continue to play that way. It'll be a, a great second half, and, and I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to have to pick a winner in this one. Six points to lead here. Here's Georgetown. Trailing Connecticut by two. That game at halftime. 37 to 31. Bradley with the six point lead here. It'll be Tulsa basketball. Middle of your screen. Well, he was in the middle of your screen. We get a look from the baseline. That's the Bradley cheering section. And now the Tulsa Golden Hurricane put it in play. Phil Spradling and Paul Pressey. Spradling up high. That's Pressey in the corner. Anderson will fire. Now the lead has been sliced to four. Mike Anderson comes out against the first two points of the second half. Bradley Braves. Willie Scott guarded by Anderson. Scott to Mitchell Anderson. That's Boise winner. Tulsa opens play, Wayne, in a straight man-to-man -man defense. Bradley running their tee game, looking for the lob pass or the throw over the top to the shooter as they did in the first half. This is third kill. Boise winners on the wing. Outside of Illinois State. Bottom. And there it is. Here it is, third kill, back door. They clear out the backside, take the help side defense out of there, maintain their patience, and eventually look for the lob or the throw over the top for the outside jumper. The alley oop down low and Bradley connects inside. A beautiful feed from Mike Anderson. 39-35 Bradley. Braves on the attack. Scott with the pass to third kill. Dealing inside. Nicely done. He's got the first four points of the ball game for the Bradley Braves here in the second half. Coach Versace puts his defense back in the diamond we saw in the first half. The one he didn't want to comment on at the half. I don't blame him. He may have to play these people in a week. Bradley from the outside. Reach. Yates down the rebound. Willie Scott is the outlet man. Racing by Pressey. On the feed of Mitchell Anderson. Inside Boise winners. Third kill picks it up and he's fouled by Greg Stewart. On Greg Stewart. It is personal foul number two. It is the first on the team. We look at it again. The offensive rebound for third kill. Picks it up off the floor and goes up. Stewart gets called for the foul from behind, and I did not see the contact. That may have been one that... Uh, I don't think Nolan Richardson saw it either. That may have gone Bradley's way, but I'll tell you what, in the game of college basketball, the people are so big and so strong and so agile that those kind of things will happen. Now, those officials are going to miss one once in a while. They're human beings. Third kill puts it out as first. Bob, the point I was making a few moments ago, outside of Illinois State, Tulsa probably plays more man-to-man -man defense than anyone else in the Valley, maybe. Well, I think uh, Drake University along with Illinois State. Drake plays all man-to-man. -man. By the way, Drake University beat both of these teams in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, under first-year head coach Gary Garner, who's done a great job with that program. Anderson lifts and hits. Mike Anderson. Here come the Braves on the run. This is Mitchell Anderson. The rebound taken by Fandley. Mike Anderson plays ahead to Phil Spradley. Stewart in the lane. Stewart in traffic, and we're going to whistle. Fouls, an offensive foul on Greg Stewart. That is the third on Stewart. It is the second on the team. We look at it again. It's a little hard to tell from that angle whether that was a charge or not. It was certainly close, but Greg Stewart's play here today I do not think has been up to par. Now, it may be in the next 18 minutes of action, but I really don't think he's been himself. He can't seem to get into the flow of the game, and if he does, things will change for Tulsa. Six points the lead for Bradley. Tulsa in the half-court pressure now. Reese has it knocked out of bounds by Stewart. It'll be Bradley ball, side court. Coming into the ball game, Herbert Johnson replacing Greg Stewart. Herbert Johnson had a field goal for two points in the first half of play. Stewart has three personal fouls. That's Donald Reese triggering on the inbound. Bottom of your screen. Mitchell Anderson, going to look at the two coaches standing up, directing traffic. Nolan Richardson closest. Third kill. Reese cross court to Scott. Scott trying to find the seam. That's third kill. He'll play cross court to Scott. Six points to lead. 
This is third kill. Make it eight points. Bradley on top. Strong move by David Third Kill. Largest lead of the afternoon. Ten points in the first half by Bradley. Now Pressy, his shot blocked by Third Kill. Third Kill takes Pressy to the floor. And the foul coming up on David Third Kill. That is personal foul number two on Third Kill. It is the first on the team in the second half of play. And everybody in Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse here in Peoria, Illinois, knew that that was a foul. There certainly wasn't any, any question about it. Pressy will get a chance to shoot two. He's been struggling a little bit lately at the free throw line. He's been talking about it. Um, it's something that has not been a secret. Straight through on the first, he had a great game from the free throw line against Wichita State earlier this season, a couple of weeks ago, and a victory at Wichita, but since has been off. There's his percentage, 66.3. Tulsa hangs in there, still only back six. Reese as he tries to inbound, and I believe he uh, tripped over the wiring from our cameraman on the baseline. They'll let him do it again. Reese will toss in. This, however, gives Tulsa time to set up a full court defense. The people are booing, but believe me, they'd rather have this basketball game on television from their field house than they would to uh, have that gentleman someplace else. <laughs> All right, Reese will toss in. Pressy guards on the inbounds. A long lead pass for winners, and they overshot him out of play. Wayne, let's remember that play. With 17.06 on the clock and a six-point lead, Tulsa got the ball back underneath their basket. That could be a very, very key play and a turning point in this second half. Paul Pressy will toss in. He has the wingspan of a 7.47. Gets it into Johnson. Herbert Johnson in the corner. Freshman out of Midland, Texas. Mike Anderson will reload the offense. Paul Pressy from the point. He's like a coach on the floor. He really is. He's very, very talented. To, he's got great poise. Anderson, the open jumper. You see, they capitalize on that turnover by Bradley. Seven points for Mike Anderson. Four points for lead for Bradley. Winners out of the corner over Spradley. The rebound pulled down by Herbert Johnson. Mike Anderson on the run through traffic. Anderson to Pressy. And Pressy on the drive will be called for steps. Turnover, Tulsa, Bradley ball. We've got a break in the action. 16 minutes, 26 seconds to go. At Robertson Fieldhouse and Bradley. Leading Tulsa 45 to 41. We'll be back after these messages. When I'm not making music with the Charlie Daniels Band, you'll find me here at home in Tennessee. And where you find me, you'll find my skull. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum, and it sure feels good. In fact, I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And my place here? <laughs> That's something I just can't get too much of. Enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Try Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. GMC brings you the GMC Cash Bonus Plan. You can get a $500 cash bonus on a new GMC S15 pickup. Get a $750 cash bonus on new GMC full-size pickups. GMC vans, jimmies, suburbans, or any other light-duty GMCs. See your participating GMC truck dealer. He can put a new GMC truck in your hands and money in your pocket. The GMC Cash Bonus Plan. It's the break you've been waiting for. We got them all. That means it's Miller time. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. The explosive Blue Demons of the Paul battle the resurging Fighting Irish. Then Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Plus the All-Stars and the Pro Stars go down to the wire for the World Championship and Women's Pro World Cup surfing tomorrow. Quite a ball game with 16.26 to go, second half. Wayne, uh, Tulsa closing the gap a little bit. Uh, Bradley is 20 for 40 from the field. Tulsa was considerably below that in shooting, but they are now 18 for 37, while the rebounding edge still goes to the Bradley Braves at 
And it's Bradley Ball. Mitchell Anderson will play cross court to Willie Scott. Braves move it across the midcourt stripe, as you can see from left to right across your screen. This is third kill, double teamed. Donald Reese way out front. Now Willie Scott. Bradley has led throughout the ball game every step of the way. Their largest lead has been 10. Boise winners shakes loose to the baseline. What a move! Didn't look like a freshman, I'll tell you that. But at this point in the season, you're no longer a freshman. You ought to be an experienced player. Great job by winners. Bill Spradling from the outside attempts to quiet the crowd, but cannot do it. And Mitchell Anderson clears the board. Willie Scott gets by Presson. Sends to the corner winner. Yes! 14 points for the freshman out of Chicago, Illinois. I go back to the first shot that he took in the ball game that went down for him. The alley-oop inside of Vanley deflected away by Winters and the foul on Boise Winters. That is his first personal foul. It is the second on the team. We get a look here again. Winters getting up off the floor trying to regain the defensive position in front of the offensive player. When he couldn't get it, he made a freshman mistake there and tried to reach over the back, making contact, drawing the foul. But certainly a, a guy that's just played very, very well. Could be the difference in the ballgame so far. Tulsa trailing by eight. They are the eighth ranked team in the nation. Pressing. Mike Anderson. Here's Pressing. The rebound, Herbert Johnson in the lane. He is hit as he turns by Willie Scott. And the foul on Willie Scott is his third. It is the third on the team. Non shooting affair. We get a look here. Herbert Johnson high in the air, takes it away from his teammate, Phil Spradling. Willie Scott reaching in, trying to knock the ball loose, draws the foul. Kelsa trying to hang close. They are within shouting distance, trailing by eight. We need to mention that Willie Scott and Donald Reese both with three fouls. Steve Harris, the freshman, right there with his jumper from 15 feet away. Six points the lead for Bradley. Some full court pressure. Light pressure in the backcourt being exerted by Tulsa. Reese takes the lead pass, pulls over Harris. No foul called. Here's Willie Scott. He takes it back outside and they reload the offense. 14 44 to go in the game. Winner slipping inside to Reese on the drive. Rebound Reese. Stays right with it. A great block by Johnson. A close up of Reese. Able to hang on. Three points for Donald Reese. In the corner, pressing back outside of Anderson. Harris in the corner, right side of the basket. Tulsa taking their time. Crowd roaring. Bradley for the upset. In the corner, Mike Anderson. Anderson quiets the crowd with a 20 footer. Bradley on top, leading by six. Winners on the drive. Again is eight and Boise winners have 16 points. Bradley tries for the upset of eighth ranked Tulsa. And they can smell it, Wayne. You can see it. The crowd feels the same way. But Tulsa will not crack. They're too strong. Harris plays to Pressy. Pressy looks to the bench. Nolan Richardson wants a timeout. We have a break in the action with 13 minutes and 39 seconds left to be played in the ball game. And that is the story. We'll be back at Robertson Fieldhouse after these messages. I didn't know that. I'm absolutely shocked. I'm surprised because I've always thought that Michelin were the top tires. These Michelin owners have heard the big news about the Uniroyal Steeler. On a government-prescribed course, Uniroyal rates its Steeler to deliver at least 20% more mileage than Michelin's ratings. At least 20% more mileage with Steelers. That's the big surprise. I might buy him. In fact, I will buy him. The Uniroyal Steeler. We give you more to go on. I'm surprised, I really am. For special offers on American-made tools, come to your participating hardware or home center store's great All-American Workshop sale. Buy Black & Decker 7 and a quarter inch two-horsepower circular saw and get a Black & Decker electric stapler free. Buy this Weller soldering iron with free accessories. Or buy this Lufkin measuring tape and get a six-foot tape free. Choose an SK quality wrench or socket set, metric or standard, and get this magnetic screwdriver set free. They're just some of the specials now at your hardware home center store during the great All-American Workshop Sale. 
B ringside as Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Then the All-Stars and the Pro Stars go down to the wire in a team skate off of the World Championship, plus Women's Pro World Cup surfing on NBC Sports World tomorrow. The Bradley Braves have made four of their last five shots from the field, and they've got the lead by eight points with 13.39 to go. You get a look at Coach Nolan Richardson. What a job he has done at Tulsa, 47 and 11 in his second season. Took that ball club to the NIT. There's the Bradley cheering section. And oh, we have heard from them here today, Bob Ortigal. Well, they certainly have uh, been great in terms of enthusiasm, but then it would be the same way if this game was being played in Tulsa. That's the way it is in the Missouri Valley Conference. Steve Harris from the outside. The rebound. Mitchell Anderson trying to keep it alive, but Pressy comes up with it. The ball slapped out of bounds, and we've got a foul down low. And that is number four if that is on Scott, and that could be costly to the Braves. It is on Willie Scott, his fourth. He is the man that makes the show go offensively. Tremendous quickness. Once again, he, he picked up his third foul. The way he picks up this one here, that's his fourth right there, reaching in, being aggressive, trying to get the ball back. But that's not always an intelligent play when you have two or three fouls on you. Fourth team foul on Bradley. Tulsa trying to hang in this one. They trail 53-45. 13-16 left to go. The clock will become important in the next couple of minutes. Tulsa has trailed every step of the way. They are the eighth-ranked team of the nation. Bradley trying for the upset. Coming off their worst performance of the season Thursday night at a loss to Creighton. Golden Hurricane of Tulsa on the attack, taking their time against that zone defense by Bradley. Harris fires over the zone, and he's got two more. Six points to the lead for Bradley. Scott Billy's will have, on the run. Excuse me, Wayne. Scott will have to be careful now with those four fouls that he doesn't pick up a cheap one charging or something like that. It could really affect the young man mentally. This is David Thirdkill, plays the point man, Willie Scott. Transfer out of Hillsdale College. Tulsa has gone away from the half-court zone pressure to man-to-man -man pressure. There's a the steal. steal by the freshman Harris. He's all alone. Yeah! And suddenly it is down to a four-point Bradley lead. Harris has 12 points. Again, it's that Tulsa bench that plays such a key role every time the Golden Hurricane take the floor. Reese is double team. Gets it away to Willie Scott. Scott misses the open jumper and Bandley the rebound. Steve Harris, Tulsa can climb back with it too. 11.54 to go. Pressing at the point. That's Mike Anderson back to Pressing. Tulsa again, taking their time. The alley hoop down low and a good pressing play. Anderson to pull pressing. We've seen it before. We've seen Anderson do that with Pressy before. You won't see a better play in the country today than that one. Willie Scott for Bradley. The Braves coaching staff wants a timeout. They'll talk things over with 11 minutes and 25 seconds left to go. Their eight-point second-half lead has been sliced down to two. You know, it'd, be, it'd be great if we could see that. Oh, we can. That's good. Here's that great pass by Anderson. It's the alley-oop lob pass over the top of the Bradley defense. Pressy takes it out of the air with two hands and dunks it with authority. That's Not nice. only a great pass, Wayne, but an example of the great hands that Paul Pressy has. Dick Versace talking things over with his group. The Bradley Braves are leading by two at 53 to 51. We'll be back after these messages. When you shoot a lot of pool and bars, you want to stay fast and loose. And you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think pool is strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Business is so quiet. You could read the books here. That book by the phone can help. The Bell System Yellow Pages. Free parking, free delivery. That's Fred. Fred's furniture next door. Oh, he does a great business. Where beautiful hair is a tradition. That's Miss Claire. <laughs> oh, is she busy? Sure. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks to people when they let their fingers do the walking and are ready to talk business. I'm ready. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We're big on books. Let your fingers do the walking. 
The lead is two for the Bradley Blaze over Tulsa, and we have 11.25 to go. Statistically, Wayne, Tulsa almost back to 50% at 23 for 45. Bradley at 24 for 46. Interestingly enough, Bradley has shot eight free throws. Tulsa nine. They both made five. Donald Reese in the corner. Bradley on the attack. The Braves trying for the upset of the nation's eighth-ranked team. Third kill. The Boise winners who's been a hot man for Bradley. Donald Reese in the corner. That's third kill out front. Bradley taking their time. Tulsa appears to be a man-to-man. Straight man-to-man. Donald Reese guarded by Badley. Reese has not been a big man offensively for Bradley here today, Bob, and I'm a little surprised. Well, the foul situation has certainly been a factor, and the other reason is that Reese is not playing inside. Reese with the finger roll. Reese gets it back. He's been out on the wing a lot because Bradley's been posting Anderson because Pressey is guarding Anderson, and they're trying to get Pressey in foul trouble. Reese has five points. The lead again is four for Bradley. Coming up on the 10-minute mark, second half. We've got a whistle down low and the foul on the freshman Boise winners away from the ball. Ron Zetcher comes over to make the call. That is the second on Boise winners. It is the fifth on the team and on shooting it there. Tulsa will trigger from the baseline, left side of the bucket. We get a good look at it here. We can see the pass. You can see that winners, as he spins around the man, throws an elbow just prior to that time. That's what he got called for. Back five, Mike Anderson out at the point for Tulsa. Ball pressing number 25. The intensity is tremendous. You can just feel the tension. The alley up to Presley in traffic. He was hit in a foul coming up on Bradley. I believe that foul is going against Donald Reese. It is against Reese, and that is his fourth. It is the sixth on the team. Here it is again. We see what we saw a little earlier. The lob pass by Anderson over the top of the Bradley defense. Presley attempts to take it out of the air, but is fouled in the process. The key... Reese's fourth foul, Willie Scott with four fouls. Bradley has two fine players with four fouls. Will be a determining factor in the game, I think. Steve Harris trying to slip inside on Boise Winters. Can't do it. Mike Anderson for Tulsa. A high bounce pass to Badley for the turn. Nicely done. The sophomore, Bruce Badley, able to connect inside. And may be the most improved player in the Missouri Valley Conference. The guy has really come along when David Brown went down. Third kill bottled up. Willie Scott. Bradley works the perimeter. Anderson inside. Back to Reese, spinning toward the bucket. Willie Scott to Reese inside. He's fouled by Badley. The sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. On Bruce Badley, that is his first personal foul. It is the sixth on the team. That time, Reese came across the lane and posted low, something he hasn't been doing a lot of. We see the pass inside to him. When he makes the move on the baseline and goes up strong, he is fouled from behind by 53, Bruce Family. Make it three team fouls, not six, three team fouls on Tulsa. Bradley has 16 fouls. Donald Reese misses his first and he'll have another. Reese has had his problems this afternoon at the free throw line. Reese, a senior from Chicago, Illinois. High points of the game. I mentioned it earlier, Wayne. I'll mention it again. It would be criminal, criminal if Bradley and Tulsa were not in the NCAA tournament. Both of them belong there. Stewart the rebound. Two-point lead for Bradley. Bradley ties it up. Great pass by Pressy. We are tied with nine minutes and 12 seconds to go. Tulsa has fought back from a 10-point deficit. Third kill inside from Winters and a foul on Steve Harris who picked him up late on the play. Personal foul number one on Steve Harris, the freshman from Blue Springs. That is the fourth on Tulsa. A good look at Coach Versace. I, I hope our viewers saw, and there's Coach Richardson from Tulsa. I hope our viewers saw what Pressy did that time. When the young freshman Harris committed the foul, Pressy went right to him, shook his hand, patted him on the backside. And that does a great deal when an All-American does that to a freshman. It settles that young man down, and that's, that's how Pressy has such a great influence on his teammates. Bradley works the perimeter. It appears to be a 2-3 zone for Tulsa at this point, Coach. 
Tulsa goes to that straight 2-3 zone against that out-of-bounds play. Mitchell Anderson bottled up in the corner, gets it to David Third. Gill spinning to the bucket, Adams slapped away. Now Winters with it. Winters has it popped away by Harris, and Harris able to recover. The crowd wanted a traveling violation on Harris, but Ron Zetcher, the official on top of the play, did not call one. Here's Harris from the outside. And with eight minutes and 25 seconds to go in the ball game, Tulsa leads for the first time this afternoon. Here's a steal by Anderson away from Scott. Anderson the shovel ahead for Harris. What a play by Anderson. He changed, I can't believe he caught Scott from the back from the back side. Anderson Great steal. With 16 points, and Tulsa has stormed the head by four with eight minutes and 13 seconds left to go. We'll return to Robertson Fieldhouse after these messages. Volkswagen introduces the amazing new Quantum. German technology that is bound to be copied. Other makers will scrutinize Quantum's patented thinking axle, hoping to unlock the secret to its agility. They'll analyze Quantum's aerodynamics, seeking a clue to its economy. They'll even burrow into Quantum's comfortable interior. Five years from now, how will you tell the original from a copy? Look right here. In northwest Montana, up by Hungry Horse and Lone Pine sits Whitefish. It's a long way to anywhere from Whitefish. So when the railroad needed computer equipment here, Honeywell was the choice. A Honeywell system may not need service often, Have a nice trip. but there's a Honeywell service engineer to come take care of it. Hey, how are you, Wayne? How you doing? Even in Whitefish. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. After four exciting weeks, the grand finale, the competition between the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars goes down to the wire. A unique team skate-off to decide the title of the World Pro Figure Skating Championship on NBC Sports World tomorrow. Tomorrow at NBC Sports World is a USBA Championship fight as title holder Frank the Animal Fletcher meets challenger Tony Braxton in a live scheduled 12-rounder from Atlantic City. Plus, the final of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship and the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship from Oahu, Hawaii Scenic North Shore. Starting at 3 Central Time tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Bradley trailing by four, Braves on the attack, and Stewart knocks the ball away from Boise Winters out of bounds. It'll be Bradley ball at side court. Wayne, this is more than just a, a great college basketball game. This is big league all the way. It really is. A good look at Coach Versace there. Both teams doing an excellent job. I told you Tulsa wouldn't crack when they were behind, and Bradley won't do it either. Just both very well coached, great athletes. They have good young players, and they have good seniors. Willie Scott running the offense to Mitchell Anderson. Anderson backs into Pressy, no foul call. Willie Scott across the way. <laughs> Willie Scott has eight points. The lead has been sliced to two with Tulsa on top. Oh, we've got one right now. Here's Harris. Comes up short as it rattles in and out. The rebound batted at a foul. Foul coming up against Tulsa, either Badley or Stewart. It is going to be on Greg Stewart. A pushing foul on the rebound. That's his fourth. Let's see if we can spot that one, Coach. Well, Bradley's got the inside position on the board, certainly. And you can see there that contact was made while the ball was in the air. Both rebounders going for the ball. I think it's an honest foul, but it doesn't matter whether it's honest or dishonest. It's a foul. Five team fouls on Tulsa with 7.36 to go. Bradley could tie the ball game with a field goal here. Willie Scott on the wing. Reese at the foul line. Wayne, I don't know whether this is official or not, but they tell me that Paul Pressey has broken the assist record at Tulsa. He currently has 11. Here's Anderson. The tap is mega. Reese gets it back. We're tied. 7 7 left to go. And we are tied at 59. Tulsa on the attack. Stewart with the hook in the lane. The rebound put for, and it's Donald Reese who comes out of the pack with it. Willie Scott goes it across. The field house, Robertson field house, they're on their feet. At Robertson field house, Bradley University of Peoria, Illinois, the score, 59 apiece. Tulsa and Bradley are tied. I'm Wade Larrow, he wouldn't be as Bob Ortigal. It's been a closely contested second half. Bradley led pretty much throughout the ball game. Tulsa a few moments ago on a four-point lead. Third kill on the drive is followed by Bradley. And David Third kill will go to the free throw line. 
for Bradley. They are tied at 59. Second personal foul on Bruce Bradley. That is the sixth on the team. Very good execution that time on Bradley's part, running their tee game. Here you see the lob pass on the tee game to David Thirdkill. He's got the easy layup. That's not a real bad play on Van Lee's part. When you know that a young man has a sure two points, if you are not in foul trouble, you might as well go ahead and make him make the two free throws. Coach Richardson's going to add to that right now, try to psych him a little with the timeout. We've got a timeout on the floor with 6.27 left to be played. And a tie score at 59 apiece. There's a look at the Bradley Brave. A lot of fun in the final regular scheduled game. Men's basketball here at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. I tell you, they're loving it. And what a game we've got. Well, there's been a lot of history here over the years, Wayne. Uh, been a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches, and a lot of great Bradley basketball teams as well as some great visiting teams but I you know I, I don't know that any game uh, has been any better than this one well, certainly certainly some of them Wayne have been as good but this is just a, a superb college basketball game you have coached here you've also played here as a player this was your home arena with the Bradley Braves the raised floor the crowd on top of the action it's got to be a big advantage for the home team well it, it is a big advantage which which means you just have to look at the Tulsa team and give them a, a whole lot of credit because uh, there's six and a half minutes to play and the score is tied. So they've been fighting against that advantage and been able to handle the crowd as well as a, a very fine Bradley team. And uh, this last, I, I hope this thing never ends. This is fun. 6.27 to go. You saw the timeout situation. There'll be a lot of coaching in the next six minutes and 27 seconds. David Third kill right now at the line for two shots. He has 10 points in the ball game. A senior, St. Louis, Missouri. It's a shame someone has to lose this game. Bradley leads by a point. He can make it two if he converts. A hush over the crowd here. Herbert Johnson, the rebound for Tulsa. Paul Pressey already today. The All-America candidate has set a school record with 11 assists. The other night he had eight steals. That set a Tulsa school record. He is just rewriting a Tulsa record book. Bradley in his own defense. Tulsa sets up to attack. Steve Harris. He's the man you want. Well, if they're in his own defense, you'll find Tulsa go to Steve Harris from the outside. Harris now with 18 points in the game on the inbound. We've got a foul coming up against the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Bruce Badley. That is the third on Badley. The pass comes in bounds to David Thirdkill. Maybe we can get a look at it here, Wayne. And when the interior, the pass was made inside to third kill, Vanley a little bit out of position. An obvious foul right there. You know, we need to mention there's two freshmen in this game, Wayne. Harris for Tulsa has 18 points, while Voicey Winters out of Chicago for the Bradley Braves has 16 points. Can you imagine uh, the future that they have in the Missouri Valley Conference? And that tells you what lies ahead for this league. Both teams are over the foul limit. Third kill, one and one opportunity. We are tied at 61. He can break the deadlock. He has 12 points. David, third kill. This time the rebound to Badley. Anderson plays ahead to Harris. Harris has 18 points. Harris will shoot anybody out of a zone defense. Ball Pressy from the point. Bradley appears to stick with that 2-3 zone. The alley-oop down the middle of the baseline. Tipped away. Taken by Bradley. He cannot convert, but a foul is called inside. Ron Setcher with the call. The foul is on Boise Winters. That is the third on Boise Winters. Bradley did a very good defensive job that time. You see against the lob pass that Tulsa has been successful with. Bradley did a good defensive job. Tulsa got a break. They got the right bounce that time. The ball came back to him. Bradley draws the foul going strong to the basket 66 actually 65.7 but in the neighborhood 66 percent from the line he has eight points here today Tulsa has struggled a bit as a team from the free throw line he missed two Mitchell Anderson the rebound we're still tied at 61 apiece 535 to go Donald Reese to Anderson Willie Scott in the corner Mitchell Anderson 
Very seldom will he take a bad shot. David Third kill, number 35 on your screen. You get a look at the action from the baseline. It'd be interesting to see if if either team gets hesitant, I think Coach Versace sensed that his team was a little hesitant and a little bit confused. I think that's an excellent call on his part, taking the time out to tell him exactly what he wants. And there is Nolan Richardson, and he will be talking things over with his Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Tulsa, the eighth-ranked team in the nation, and the Bradley Brave, a lot to stop about here today. If we get a look at the, uh, the timeout of Tulsa once again, we'll, I'll point out to... The temperament that's constantly maintained by Coach Richardson when he talks to his players. That is carried over to the floor. I think that's what enables that team, when they are behind, to hang in there and, and not to panic. Certainly we see the same thing uh, on the side of the, the Bradley basketball team, but it's been a strength for Tulsa all year. We have seen them behind before, and they have been able to maintain their composure as a result of their leader, Nolan Richardson. Each team has two timeouts remaining with 5.07 to go. Coming up next, it's the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you near Pittsburgh, Kansas, will be seeing Nebraska at Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, you'll see Minnesota at Iowa. And at Tulsa, you'll watch Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. That's coming up next here on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. Wayne Laramie and Bob Ortigal, we're at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. Tulsa and Bradley for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. 61 apiece, we are tied as you get a look at Nolan Richardson in the polka dot shirt. Flashy dresser, isn't he, Coach? Well, he really is. Uh, at this point, I think it's going to be interesting to take note of what happens here now in terms of strategy. What did Dick Versace have to say to eliminate some of the hesitancy offensively? Tipped away by Johnson, taken by Pressy to Johnson, the freshman spinning in the backcourt. Now baseline for the pop, way off the mark, winners the rebound, it's Bradley Ball. Winners double team to the backcourt, has it taken away by Anderson, he can't convert on the drive. Boise Winters gets it back and dribbles out of traffic. Plays ahead for Mitchell Anderson who has to chase down the ball, batted away, knocked out of bounds by Steve Harris, and it will be Bradley basketball. So the action sloppy on the sequence, but Bradley retains possession. They're going to get a little tense right now, Wayne. They really are at this point in the ball game. There's so much at stake. We get a, a very good look there at both coaches. Great camera work when you can get a look at both guys, seeing how they, they make their big money. Scott, cross court, third kill. Reese up high, baseline, back door, Anderson. Give credit to the pass. Great pass to Anderson and a stuff. Mitchell has had it. Bradley leads by a field goal. Tulsa, good tie. 16 to go. Ball pressing. Mike Anderson in the corner. Harris comes up short. Reese controlling the rebound for Bradley. Reese is double teamed and he's fouled. Fouled by Steve Harris. On Harris, that'll be personal foul number two. Both sides are over the foul limit. Tulsa comes at Reese on the recovery here with a trap. Pressy and Harris, number 20. Harris reaches in with his right arm and draws the foul there. Much to the chagrin of that man, Nolan Richardson, and Donald Reese, number 50, at the free throw line. Reese has seven points here today. His team leading by two. Let's give Reese and Scott a lot of credit for the Bradley Braves. They've played a long way with four fouls apiece. One and one opportunity. comes three and he can make it four. Bradley on top, trying for the upset of the nation's eighth ranked team, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Donald Reese, senior, Chicago, Illinois. Four points the lead for Bradley over Tulsa. Two very big free throws by Donald Reese. Paul Pressley at the point. Steve Harris on the wing. Anderson in the corner. Paul Pressley sets things up. Harris had a shot momentarily. Now he works to the point. They reload the offense. There is the time. 
second half of play. Can a defense in this crowd. The 28th consecutive sellout at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. This crowd roaring for the Bradley defense. Anderson quiets the crowd. Mike Anderson, he was yes, filled sir. after the shot. Score the field goal and the foul coming up on David Third Kill. And his three on third kill. And it will send Mike Anderson to the free throw line for a one and one opportunity. And they score the field goal. Now the foul occurred after the shot. And that's what Dick Versace is checking out of the bottom of your screen. I wish we could get a look at that again. You know, when a young man takes a shot from outside like that, you have a tendency to follow the flight of the ball. That's only natural. After that shot was taken by Anderson, contact was made by third kill. Consequently, the basket counts, and he gets the one and one. He can tie the ball game at 65 apiece if he converts right here. He has 10 points in the contest so far today. We have 3 minutes and 21 seconds left to be played. Mike Anderson, a senior, Birmingham, Alabama. The ball game is tied with 3.21 to go. Bradley Braves receiving some pressure in the backcourt from Paul Preston, number 25. Third kill gives up his dribble. Willie Scott takes it across. David third kill. Third kill looking for help. Wheels out of traffic. Plays to Willie Scott. Anderson bats it away and is called for the foul as he bumps the third kill. Mike Anderson hit with personal foul number two, and as we've been saying, the one and one situation in effect for both teams. Al Anderson gambled and went off the went after the steal, but he's got a good shot at it. I think it was a very good gamble, an intelligent play. He gets the foul call against him as third kill goes to the floor. We're seeing a little bit of everything here. Coach Richardson trying to get a timeout. He cannot get the attention of his players. He must get it before the free throw shooter gets the ball, and he does. Timeout on the floor. Three minutes and three seconds left to be played here at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois, as the Tulsa Golden Hurricane surround their head coach, Nolan Richardson. We're coming back to Robertson after these messages. New Backwoods Smokes just hit town. Looking wild, but tasting mild. New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. All natural tobacco, hand-rolled look in a keep em fresh pocket pouch. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? What's more natural than natural light? Now I'm asking you, what could be more natural than natural light beer on the grand day of the wearing of the green? Ah, natural light from Anheuser-Busch. It's the beer with the taste for food and fun. Why, it's just the thing for the party, you know. On the day when everyone's Irish, give them a kiss. But before you do, ask them this. What's more natural than natural light? Hey, Arnold Palmer is having a get-together. Will it swing? Sure, everybody's going to be there. Is it a long drive? No, it's next weekend on NBC Sports. All right, what's the trap? No trap. It'll have golf's best. Gee, I hope the Golden Bear comes out of hibernation. Huh? <laughs> now, we've got a great game going here with three minutes and three seconds to go. Tulsa and Bradley for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. Now, coming up next, the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you at Pittsburgh, Kansas, will see Nebraska at Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, it's Minnesota at Iowa, and in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Great college basketball coming up next here on the home of Super College Basketball, NBC Sports. Those will be some great basketball games following this one, Wayne. No question about that. Third kill, 11 points of the ball game. Misses on the front end of a one-on-one -one opportunity. Badly the rebound of the Golden Hurricane come back the other way. Paul Pressy, number 25. Coming up on the two-minute mark. Inside, Stewart had it blocked, gets it back, goes to the hoop and a foul. Foul coming up on the Bradley Braves. Foul is on Boise Winters, and we'll get another look. We see a, a great block here by Anderson. 
but Stewart recovers the block shot, goes back up and draws the foul. The freshman Boise winners following him. Good second effort on Stewart's part. He really could be the difference down the stretch here. Virginia and Maryland are at halftime. 23 to 21, Virginia Trilling, Maryland. And Stewart puts in on the second free throw. Tulsa with a two-point lead. Willie Scott on the run. Two minutes, 41 seconds to go. Willie Scott had the ball slapped past the midcourt stripe for a three-by-third kill. You notice that Tulsa continues to be very aggressive defensively, not allowing Bradley to get into the flow of their offense. Willie Scott looking for help. Third kill, the man cross court. Boise winners had a great first half. Mitchell Anderson back to Scott. A two-point lead for Tulsa. Bradley being very patient at this point with two minutes and ten seconds to go in the game. Willie Scott sets up the offense to Mitchell Anderson. They start the weaving down low. Less than two minutes to go in the game. But Bradley Bench wants a timeout, and they will get one with a minute 48 to go. A minute 48 to be played here at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. And Dick Versace and his ball club, the Bradley Braves, are trailing by two, 67 to 65. Coach, what do you tell your team at this point? Well, the last time in this particular situation when Bradley took the timeout, uh, they came out of that timeout and were not hesitant at all. Uh, went right to what they wanted to do offensively with a lob. Uh, there's a good look at the Tulsa timeout situation. And as I mentioned before, you get a look at, at Coach Richardson's temperament. The way in which he talks to his team, maintains his poise. I think that carries over. That's also happening at the other end of the floor with Dick Versace. He is calmly talking to his charges, and they are listening, listening very attentively. But I think you will see Bradley come out. With something definite in mind, you wonder, have to wonder if they will try to go to the leading scorer in Bradley basketball history, Mitchell Anderson. They might also try to go to Reese inside. There are just a lot of things that can happen at this point, and uh, it's, uh, this is the time when the viewer should make his or her decision because after the timeout, when the play has been made, now that's when everybody wants to second guess the coach. That's not always fair. That's right. Nolan Richardson plays chance. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane will reappear. A minute 48 left to go. The Tulsa cheerleaders. I'm surprised they let him in the building. I'll, I'll tell you what. Don't go to your refrigerator right now. You better stay close. Both teams back on the floor. Bradley one timeout remaining. Tulsa has two left. Standing ovation as the Braves reappear. They will be on offense. Bradley, there's the Brave, and Dick Versace, being brave of law. Tulsa's going to stay in the zone, try to make Bradley shoot the ball outside, try not to foul. There's a good look at it defensively. You can see the Tulsa defense. Top of your screen, time left to go in the game. Winners to Scott. They play catch. Baseline Anderson, we get a whistle call up a well the officials have stopped the action and they want a light turned off on one of the cameras I believe not one of our cameras but uh, one of the local television stations I believe so with that piece of adjustment accomplished Bradley will resume Dick Versace on the bench Nolan Richardson closest to your screen in the polka dotted shirt standing up Bradley resumes with a minute 30 to go. Bradley trailing by two, trying for the upset of eighth-ranked Tulsa. Willie Scott at the point. Mitchell Anderson on the wing. Boise Winters in the corner. They work the right side. Anderson sneaking through. Back to Winters. They return to Willie Scott. This is David Third kill. Winters at the point. 63 seconds remaining. One minute to go in the game. Bradley wants another timeout, Wayne. They want another timeout. Coach Versace wants to talk to his people. Bradley sp spends their last timeout. 56 seconds left to be played. 
In this particular situation, Wayne, when you're playing at home, you're down two points with 50 seconds on the clock. Number one, get the ball inbounds. Number Larry Speaks says President Reagan deeply re You know, people may not like this, but that's the way it is. Being at home, put the pressure on the officials. Take it inside, try and draw that foul. See if Tulsa can't just let you shoot it. By the same token, you might get to the free throw line. Tomorrow, it's another great day of sports action on NBC. Starting at 1 Central Time, catch College Hoop Fever as the third-ranked DePaul Blue Demons take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Then at 3 Central Time, NBC Sports World brings you the live USBA Middleweight Championship fight between Frank the Animal Fletcher and Tony Braxton. Plus, the final of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship and the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship all tomorrow here on NBC. Elsa leading by two. <laughs> Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ortego, we are at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. That is the story. It is Bradley Ball. Been a closely contested game. Bradley had leads of as many as 10 and 8 points, but Tulsa has torn back to take the lead in the second half. Bradley on the attack. In the corner, Mitchell Anderson. Third kill from the outside. Right 34 seconds to go. Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane, have two timeouts. 25 seconds to go. There's the story. 20 seconds remaining. 67 apiece. We are tied. The Golden Hurricane winding down the clock. Nine seconds remaining. Tie ball game. They'll have to look to the hoop in a hurry. Will they get it off? Here's Pessy. You have to wonder in a situation like that, Wayne, whether or not Tulsa should have been quite so hesitant. You have to stop and think about the possibility of the timeouts. If, if Tulsa had not used all their timeouts here with two seconds on the clock, you see Pressy does not get a good shot. Tulsa did not get a good shot with a score tied, trying to win the basketball game on a last second shot. So we go to five minutes of overtime and it will begin with a jump ball because we go back to a jump ball in overtime situations. End of regulation. We're heading to overtime at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. There is your score and we've got five more minutes to go back after these messages. Buds for the guys who take all the heat for us. This buds for you. This buds for, for you. For all you do, the king of business coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Ooh, yeah. For all you do. Hey, this buds for you. Big game tonight, huh? Yeah, you gonna be there? I'll be there. Frank, I need this analysis before you leave. When you've got an important deadline, you need a Honeywell office automation system. Using a desktop terminal, executives can organize data, analyze statistics, and get their work done. At Honeywell, we know how important it can be to meet a deadline. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Wade Larravee and Bob Ortigal. We are in Peoria, Illinois, at Robertson Fieldhouse, the start of overtime, and we welcome those of you joining us from the Chicago, Illinois area. This Bradley basketball team, Wayne, with a very strong Chicago flavor. This has been an excellent basketball game. We played 40 minutes and deadlocked at 67 apiece. Willie Scott has the open chip shot. Trying to utilize the backboard, it wouldn't go. Manley had it swept away, and it's taken by Scott. Bradley on the attack. Opening minute of play of overtime. Tulsa ranked number eight in the nation. Bradley trying for the upset. Bradley unranked by either the AP or the UPI Bowl. 
Willie Scott. That's Boise Winters. Last year he led the nation's high school seniors in scoring. Anderson down low. The tap by Reese. Adam Reese, a Chicago, Illinois senior. And hang on. We've got a foul coming up. It is on Donald Reese. No basket. Anderson missed the shot inside, Wayne. We can see a great pass inside to Mitchell Anderson, who misses the shot. Donald Reese coming down the middle, goes up and tips it in. Is called for pushing on the play. A tough call to make in a situation like that. Really hard to determine from the replay whether or not he shoved or not. Donald Reese leaves the ball game with his fifth personal foul, and Barney Mines comes on for the Bradley Braves. At the line, the man who was pushed on the rebound, Bruce Vanley. Not only does Bradley lose the basket, but they lose Donald Reese on his fifth foul. And he's just been an awesome player for the Braves. Vanley missing on the free throw, and Boise Winters clears the board. Willie Scott steers a dribble against Paul Pressey. Third kill moves it across. We're tied at 67 apiece. Just about one minute into this overtime period. Third kill looking for help, and he's fouled. Fouled by Badley. Badley was taking part on the double team, and that is four personal fouls on Badley. Both teams have long been over the foul limit, and David Third Kill appears at the free throw line. Third Kill out of St. Louis, Missouri, 6'7, averaging 13.6 points per ball game on the campaign. One and one opportunity. He has his 13 points here today. And he puts Bradley on top by a point. Third kill has been a little bit better than a 50% free throw shooter. David Third kill, a great athlete. Two Three point two Bradley seconds. lead. Dick Versace up off the bench, directing the defense. Tulsa on offense. Mike Anderson. Tulsa ranked number eight. And as we've been saying, Bradley looking for the upset. Steve Harris with the up fake. Plays to Pressey. Pressey operates the ball club from the point. Down low, Harris to Stewart in the lane in traffic. Banks it high off the glass. It wouldn't go. Rebound is back tapped and chased down by Mitchell Anderson. Cross court to Willie Scott. We've got an injury. David Third kill is down for Bradley and appears to be favoring his right leg. They have been stung in the thigh. They hold up action. David Thirdkill in a lot of pain. It's not his knee or he wouldn't have been able to bend it like that, Wayne, and that's, that's fortunate. We don't really know what the problem is at this point. It's the ankle, it looks like. He turned the ankle over. And is in pain, obviously. David Thirdkill, been a big man in Bradley plans here this afternoon. We... Hope that it's just a Charlie horse or something. These games coming up next, Texas A&M against Houston. Great Southwest Conference battle. Nebraska and Kansas State. That'll be a good one in the Big 8. Minnesota against Iowa. A Big 10 clash. And Oklahoma against Oklahoma State. A great in-state rivalry. Wayne, we get a, get a chance to see what happened here with third kill. You see him inside there, number 35. He's going for the ball. He comes down, turns that ankle over is what happened. I tell you, it's hard to believe that, uh, that he would be able to play anymore today with the way he's limping off the floor. That means Bradley is playing now without third kill and without Reese. They have a two-point lead with three and a half minutes to go. You have to wonder now if they'll sit on it and try and protect that lead. There's a lot of time left, and protecting leads, sitting on the basketball against Tulsa is very difficult because they're so very effective defensively. Let's see how the Braves play it. Some concerned faces on the sidelines. Bradley fans, this is just another of the many great games this afternoon here on NBC. Marty Mines plays the inbounds pass to Willie Scott. Terry Cook is in the ball game, replacing third kill for Bradley. Marty Mines over to Willie Scott. 3.23 to go. Inside winners. The tap is good. Got it down. JJ got it. Four point lead for Bradley. Steve Harris in the corner. Mike Anderson back to Harris. Bradley in the zone. Tulsa would like to get the ball to Harris. He shoots over his home at 63% efficiency. Harris a bit out of his range. Picked up by Anderson in the zone. Now Mike Anderson of Tulsa with the basketball. 
2.45 to go. Harris from deep. Comes up short. The tap by Badley and a foul. And it's on Bruce Badley on the rebound. Five. Three is the number. Flash to the scoring table by Ron Fisher. Badley inside. Makes a move. Going for the basketball right there. Trying to get inside. Is over the back. And draws the foul. And on number 50. And he is out of the game. Badley, his fifth personal foul. The substitution is Herbert Johnson, the freshman. I may be wrong, Wayne. I wonder if he reported or came directly off the bench. I know that Richardson was trying to get a timeout, and he will get it with two minutes and 39 seconds to go in overtime. And Bradley leading it by four. We'll return to Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois, after these messages kind of slippery. I'll be careful. Besides, we're not alone. Ah, yes. We've got the blimp behind us. The sisters may not know that Goodyear rolls up 9 million miles a year testing tires, but they sure like the traction they get. So, with a blimp behind us, our car handles just, just divinely. <laughs> get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. Oh, it's good to have friends in high places. That blue paint looks fine for our new house, but I don't think we brought enough with us. Yeah, and who knows if there's a custom paint store around here. D&W, paint and paint supplies. The Pell System Yellow Pages talks when your fingers do the walking. You save gas, money, and time. Al's Paint, corner of Oak and Third. We match colors. Looks like we've run out. That's okay, Dad. We'll just run out to the corner for some more. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We match colors. Let your fingers do the walking. Tulsa Golden Hurricane at 21 and 4, Bradley at 19 and 9. Tulsa ranked number 8 in the nation in Bradley. With an upset of the making, leading by 4, 2.39 to go in the overtime period. Timeouts were many. According to the official scores table, one apiece, one for Tulsa, one for Bradley. Be a whole lot of coaching going on down the stretch here, Bob Ortigal. Well, there really will, Wayne, and there has been uh, in this overtime period and then throughout the basketball game. Big free throws, obviously Bradley with the four-point lead. Winters has just been superb. He opened the ball game with about an 18-footer and drained it, and he's been tough ever since. He's got 15 points for the Bradley Braves, and this lead has been stretched to five. Boise Winters, freshman, Chicago, Illinois, led the nation in scoring as a high school senior with a 40-point average last year. Winters gets two down. Dick Versace and his Bradley Braves own a six-point lead. A chant of defense from the crowd here at Robertson Fieldhouse. Pressing, trying to break the drop for Tulsa. Boise Winters, there's the board. What a roll the freshman has played for Bradley here this afternoon. Willie Scott on the drive, gets the step in the lane on the feed to Anderson. We've got a foul out front. Basket will not count. Foul coming up on Mike Anderson of Tulsa. That'll be his third. Third on Anderson, and it will send Willie Scott to the line. We get a look at it again. Willie Scott making the penetration. Anderson comes in from behind, going for the steal. Willie Scott makes the first free throw, shooting the second. The Bradley leads seven points. Scott has nine points. And the second drop for Willie Scott. 75-67, Bradley on top. Two minutes, 13 seconds to go. Tulsa has to score a bunch in a hurry. Steve Harris ducking in under. The rebound back tap down low, and Stewart able to can it inside. And credit Pressy, the man who kept the ball alive, slapping it down low to Greg Stewart. First two points of the overtime for Tulsa. Here's Barney Mines answering in a foul. Yes, and a count. Offensive foul on Barney Mines after the shot. Marty Mines hit with a second personal foul. But more importantly, Bradley continues to lead by eight with a minute 54 to go in overtime. Bradley broke the pressure in the backcourt, continued to pursue the basket, which is what you want to do. Too frequently, when you handle pressure in the backcourt, you get the ball in the front court, you pick it up, and you allow the defense to get back and play against you again. Bradley continued to go after the basket with the advantage, had a good shot. Mike Anderson at the free throw line. It's the first, and he'll have another. Seven points the lead for still, the Bradley Braves. 
Still a lot of time to play. Upcoming, a great slate of college basketball as Anderson puts on his second. Six points the lead for Bradley. Full court pressure by Tulsa. Mitchell Anderson leaning into Pressey, and an offensive foul is called, and a great defensive move by Paul Pressey. That's the second personal foul of Mitchell Anderson, and it will send Paul Pressey to the free throw line. Now, hang on, it'll give Tulsa the basketball. They'll inbound. Look here, you can get a good look at it. Anderson definitely, no, there is no doubt about that. Back live, Steve Harris misses from the outside. He tries it again and hits. Harris following his own shot. It's not over yet. Four-point lead for the Bradley Braves. Anderson on the run, pulls up, hit from behind, and a foul is called on Herbert Johnson, who could not stop his momentum as he trailed Mitchell Anderson, and he has hit the sore back of Mitchell Anderson. Anderson has played throughout the entire season with back spasms and got hit in the back on the drive. Watch it again. We see the contact here. Anderson brings the ball into the front court, and it's literally just run over, but he got hit in the back, and you have to wonder about that, how much it will affect him, because... That thing has been reoccurring throughout the year for Anderson. He has continued to play with pain. You have to admire him for that. A great All-American. Mitchell Anderson, 10 points here this afternoon. His team leading by four. Anderson gets the first one down. That'll make that back feel better. It's a five-point lead for Bradley with a minute 37 left to go. Anderson, 11 points, matching the numbers on his shirt. Bradley leading by five, a minute 36 to go. We're in overtime, Tulsa on the attack. Mike Anderson over a crowd and a foul inside. Foul being indicated on the Bradley Braves. The foul is on Boise Winters, I believe. No, it's on, it's on Scott. Willie Scott. Make it Willie Scott, and that is his fifth. And the reason that hurts so much is because Scott handles the ball against the Tulsa pressure. If Tulsa makes this one and one situation right here, we have a three-point ball game with a lot of time to play. Tulsa counters right now with Phil Spradling back in the ball game for Stewart because of wanting to apply defensive pressure on the Braves. Mike Anderson at the line puts down the first. Eddie Harris, a freshman out of New York City, New York, comes back into the ball game for Bradley. And there is Willie Scott. He is out of the picture. He's out of this game on foul. A minute 29 to go in overtime. A rebound taken by Kerry Cook. Bradley owns a four-point lead. Harris plays ahead to Anderson. It's broken up by Pressey. Taken by Johnson. Pressey on the drive has it blocked away and knocked out of bounds. And a foul coming up on Mitchell Anderson. Anderson guilty of his third personal foul. And it will send Pressey to the line. Phil Spradling, the man who broke up that play and then got the basketball somehow out to Paul Pressley on the drive, and Anderson guilty of the foul. Bradley takes its final timeout in the overtime period, and we've got a break in the action. A minute 18 to go in overtime. We'll return after these messages. You know people like us. We're teachers. Firemen. People just like you. These are the uniforms we wear at work. But these are the uniforms we wear when we serve part-time in the Reserves and the National Guard. You see, in the Reserves and the Guard, you not only serve your country, you're part of a first-rate team, training alongside real buddies. Yet while you serve, you can live at home and keep your full-time job. Because in the Reserves and the Guard, you don't have to give up one life to live another. The Reserves and the National Guard. Talk to your local recruiter. The beauty of a Delta faucet is when it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. Its washerless design helps keep it from dripping, so it lasts and lasts and lasts. Delta Faucet. We're first because we last. My beer from Miller tastes just great, and that's no fish store. But the best thing is, it's less filling. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and that's important when you're trying to land that big one, like yesterday. I hooked this bass, fought it for over six hours. All of a sudden, 
he jumps clean over the boat. <laughs> Broke my rod, and I had to tie the... Now, wait a minute, fellas. I had to tie the... Light line beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Left me out there with nothing but a paddle. Bradley leading by four here in overtime with a minute 18 to go. As soon as we get a winner here, we'll be joining Texas A&M at Houston or Nebraska Kansas State. Some of you will see Minnesota and Iowa. Others will be watching Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. As soon as we have a winner here. Conference between freshman Steve Harris, senior Mike Anderson at the free throw line. Paul Pussy misses the first of a two-shot foul. The difference right now is that Tulsa's playing with veterans down the stretch. Bradley with young players that are inexperienced. Let's see if that makes a difference. The lead is three for Bradley. Eddie Harris, a freshman, number 23, plays cross-court to the senior, Mitchell Anderson. Anderson gives up his dribble, now looking for help. Throws ahead for Kerry Cook. Kerry Cook on the sideline, spinning out of traffic. Cook plays to Barney Mines. 62 seconds to go. Harris chases down and is hit from behind by Herbert Johnson. Nope, they're going to call it on Anderson. Mike Anderson guilty of the foul. That is his fourth. Anderson and Herbert Johnson did a sandwich job on Eddie Harris, and as a result, Harris at the free throw line. The free throw shooter, Wayne, out of New York City, played for former Bradley basketball player Chuck Gramby at Andrew Jackson High School in New York. Bressy fighting for the rebound, a tie-up, and a jump ball is called. I believe it'll belong to Bradley. Yep. No, it belongs to Tulsa. Tulsa will get the basketball on the alternating possession of jump balls. The rule favors Tulsa on that one. They tie it up again and it'll go to Bradley. Spradling 22 in the corner. Harris looking for his shot. Rebound down low. Pressing. And he rolls it home with 43 seconds to go. It's a one-point ball game in favor of Bradley. Kerry Cook having problems getting it in. Cross court the pass to Barney Mines. Bradley trying to salt away, 30 seconds on the clock. Mitchell Anderson plays ahead for Barney Mike, dribbles it off his foot, picked up by Johnson, ahead to Mike Anderson. Anderson bumps to the floor, no foul call. Harris picks up for Bradley. Eddie Harris, baseball feed ahead to the corner. And Boise winners, winners number 34. Inside Mitchell Anderson. Curry Cook on the back door, it's blocked away by Pussy and a foul. On Paul Pressey, it is his fourth personal foul. Eight seconds remaining and a one-point lead for Bradley. It's a very fine pass on Anderson's part. Right here to Cook coming to the basket. He goes up. Pressey comes in from behind. Certainly didn't fall with the hand, but he may have hit his head. Pressey may have hit his head with his elbow. I think that's where the contact was made and consequently the foul. A timeout taken by Coach Nolan Richardson at the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. 78-77, Bradley over Tulsa, eight seconds to go in overtime. We'll be back after these messages. Here comes Harry Gant and the Skull Bandit in for a pit stop. Hi, I'm Harry Gant. When I bring the Skull Bandit in for a pit stop, I come in for a paint stop. Because while the rest of the team takes care of the Bandit, I get to take a little pinch of Skull, put it between my cheek and gum for real tobacco pleasure without lighting up. Now that's what we call teamwork. And Skull's what we call team pleasure. For real tobacco pleasure without lighting up, try Skull. A pinch is all it takes. If you're one of the many people whose life insurance needs are changing today, check with State Farm. I'm State Farm agent Jim Scally. In today's economy, people's life insurance needs are changing, and State Farm is changing to meet those needs. We have a variety of life insurance products, all at a good price. We'll help you plan the program that's right for you, and we'll be there to help you keep it up to date. Check with State Farm. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Right Guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why Right Guard Solid has an action-triggered formula. Triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right Guard Action Triggered Formula helps keep you dry and odor free all day. Right Guard Anti Perspirant Solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. Way Laravin, Bob Ortigal. That is the full story. The time on top of your screen. At the free throw line, Kerry Cook, junior college transfer. Cook shoots at about 60. 
6% from the free throw line. Bradley on top by a point. He can make it two. Going into this game, Wayne, there's no way that that young man anticipated being at the free throw line in that situation. Yeah, I have to give him a lot of credit. Cook for a three-point lead. Eight seconds remaining. Quickly, Tulsa on the attack. Harris down low, banks it home. It's down to a one-point ball game. Two seconds remaining. And we've got a stop in the play. Bradley, I believe, wants a timeout. No, I believe we have a technical foul. If Tulsa had used all of their timeouts and they took a timeout to, That's right. to uh, stop the clock, it's an automatic tee. Bradley will get to shoot one free throw and get the ball out of bounds. But ladies and gentlemen, we still have two seconds on the clock. That's the call. Nolan Richardson at his bench trying to signal for a timeout. As Harris made the shot inside. So the lead remains one point score the field goal Tulsa tried to call a timeout they did not have and as coach Bob Ortigal mentioned Bradley will be heading to the free throw stripe and they're going to send out the senior Mitchell Andrew Anderson Wayne it's not a bad call on Tulsa's part our viewers need to understand that if they hadn't called the timeout Bradley simply would have held the ball out of bounds they had no chance Anderson at the line, and he makes it a two-point lead. He can make it a three-point margin with two seconds remaining. And it would take a miracle for Tulsa if he converts on this free throw. 82-79. It'll be Bradley basketball with two seconds to go. And it appears the Braves have won the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. Mitchell Anderson hangs out of the ball at the buzzer. The final score The Bradley Blaze in and two. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane 79. Special thanks to our NBC crew, our producer Robert Helders, our director Richard Cook, for Bob Ortigo, Wayne Lurvey saying so long from Peoria, Illinois. Bruno wants it. It's kind of like making love. It's always terrific, but it can always get better. Bruno wants fame. Lads, come to order. Pay attention just once. Hey, Arnold Palmer is having a get-together. Will it swing? Sure, everybody's going to be there. Is it a long drive? No, it's next weekend on NBC Sports. All right, what's the trap? No trap. It'll have golf's best. Gee, I hope the golden bear comes out of hibernation. Huh? Now we've got a great game going here with three minutes and three seconds to go. Tulsa and Bradley for the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. Now, coming up next, the second half of today's regional college basketball doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing Texas A&M at Houston. Those of you at Pittsburgh, Kansas, will see Nebraska at Kansas State. Around the Peoria area, it's Minnesota at Iowa, and in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Great college basketball coming up next here on the home of Super College Basketball, NBC Sports. Those will be some great basketball games following this one, Wayne. No question about that. Third kill, 11 points of the ball game. Misses on the front end of a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Badly the rebound of the Golden Hurricane come back the other way. Paul Pressy, number 25. Coming up on the two-minute mark. Inside, Stewart had it blocked, gets it back, goes to the hoop, and a foul. Foul coming up on the Bradley Braves. Foul is on Boise Winters, and we'll get another look. We see a, a great block here by Anderson, but Stewart recovers the block shot, goes back up, and draws the foul. The freshman Boise Winters following him. Good second effort on Stewart's part. He really could be the difference down the stretch here. Virginia and Maryland are at halftime. 23 to 21, Virginia Trilly, Maryland. And Stewart puts in on the second free throw. Tulsa with a two-point lead. Willie Scott on the run. Two minutes, 41 seconds to go. Willie Scott 
And the ball slapped past the midcourt stripe for three by third kill. You notice that Tulsa continues to be very aggressive defensively, not allowing Bradley to get into the flow of their offense. Willie Scott looking for help. Third kill to Van Crosscourt. Boise Winters had a great first half. Mitchell Anderson back to Scott. A two-point lead for Tulsa. Bradley being very patient at this point with two minutes and ten seconds to go in the game. Willie Scott sets up the offense to Mitchell Anderson. They start the weaving down low. Less than two minutes to go in the game. But Bradley Bench wants a timeout, and they will get one with a minute 48 to go. A minute 48 to be played here at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. And Dick Versace and his ball club, the Bradley Braves, are trailing by two, 67 to 65. Coach, what do you tell your team at this point? Well, the last time in this particular situation when Bradley took the timeout, uh, they came out of that timeout and were not hesitant at all. Uh, went right to what they wanted to do offensively with a lob. Uh, there's a good look at the Tulsa timeout situation. And as I mentioned before, you get a look at, at Coach Richardson's temperament, the way in which he talks to his team, maintains his poise. I think that carries over. That's also happening at the other end of the floor with Dick Versace. He is calmly talking to his charges, and they are listening, listening very attentively. I think you will see Bradley come out with something definite in mind. You wonder, have to wonder if they will try to go to the leading scorer in Bradley basketball history, Mitchell Anderson. They might also try to go to Reese inside. There are just a lot of things that can happen at this point. And, uh, it's the, this is the time when the viewer should make his or her decision because after the timeout, when the play has been made, now that's when everybody wants to second guess the coach. And that's not always fair. That's right. Melvin Richardson plays chance. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane will reappear. A minute 48 left to go. The Tulsa cheerleaders, I'm surprised they let him in the building. I'll tell you what, don't go to your refrigerator right now. You better stay close. Both teams back on the floor. Bradley, one timeout remaining. Tulsa has two left. Standing ovation as the Braves reappear. They will be on offense. Bradley, there's the Brave, and Dick Versace, King Brave of Law. Tulsa's going to stay in the zone, try to make Bradley shoot the ball outside, try not to foul. There's a good look at it defensively. You can see the Tulsa defense. Top of your screen, time left to go in the game. Winners to Scott, they play catch. Baseline Anderson, we get a whistle. Call up a, well, the officials have stopped the action and they want a light turned off on one of the cameras, I believe. Not one of our cameras, but uh, one of the local television stations, I believe. So with that piece of adjustment accomplished, Bradley will resume. Dick Versace on the bench. Nolan Richardson closest to your screen with the polka dotted shirt standing up. Bradley resumes with a minute 30 to go. Bradley trailing by two, trying for the upset of eighth ranked Tulsa. Willie Scott at the point. Mitchell Anderson on the wing. Boise Winters in the corner. They work the right side. Anderson sneaking through. Back to Winters. They return to Willie Scott. This is David Third kill. Winners at the point, 63 seconds remaining, one minute to go in the game. Bradley wants another timeout, Wayne. They want another timeout. Coach Versace wants to talk to his people. Bradley spends their last timeout, 56 seconds left to be played. In this particular situation, Wayne, when you're playing at home, you're down two points with 56 seconds on the clock. Number one, get the ball inbounds. Number Larry Speaks says President Reagan deeply re You know, people may not like this, but that's the way it is. Being at home, put the pressure on the officials. Take it inside, try and draw that foul. See if Tulsa can't just let you shoot it. By the same token, you might get to the free throw line. 
Tomorrow it's another great day of sports action on NBC starting at 1 central time. Catch College Hoop Fever as the third ranked DePaul Blue Demons take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Then at 3 central time, NBC Sports World brings you the live USBA middleweight championship fight between Frank the Animal Fletcher and Tony Braxton. Plus the final of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship and the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship all tomorrow here on NBC. Elsa leading by two. <laughs> Wayne Larrabee and Bob Ortego, we are at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. That is the story. It is Bradley Ball. Been a closely contested game. Bradley had leads of as many as 10 and 8 points, but Tulsa has torn back to take the lead in the second half. Bradley on the attack. In the corner, Mitchell Anderson. Third kill from the outside. <laughs> 34 seconds to go. Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane, have two timeouts. 25 seconds to go. There's the story. 20 seconds remaining. 67 apiece. We are tied. The Golden Hurricane winding down the clock. Nine seconds remaining. Tie ball game. They'll have to look to the hoop in a hurry. Will they get it off? Here's Pessy. You have to wonder in a situation like that, Wayne, whether or not Tulsa should have been quite so hesitant. You have to stop and think about the possibility of the timeouts. If, if Tulsa had not used all their timeouts here with two seconds on the clock, you see Pressy does not get a good shot. Tulsa did not get a good shot with a score tied, trying to win the basketball game on a last second shot. So we go to five minutes of overtime and it will begin with a jump ball because we go back to a jump ball in overtime situations. End of regulation. We're heading to overtime at Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois. There is your score and we've got five more minutes to go back after these messages. This bud's for the guys who take all the heat for us. This bud's for you. This bud's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Ooh, yeah. For all you do. Hey, this bud's for you. Big game tonight, huh? Yeah, you gonna be there? I'll be there. Frank, I need this analysis before you leave. When you've got an important deadline, you need a Honeywell office automation system. Using a desktop terminal, executives can organize data, analyze statistics, and get their work done. At Honeywell, we know how important it can be to meet a deadline. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Wayne Larravee and Bob Ortigo. We are in Peoria, Illinois, Robertson Fieldhouse, the start of overtime, and we welcome those of you joining us from the Chicago, Illinois area. This Bradley basketball team, Wayne, with a very strong Chicago flavor. This has been an excellent basketball game. We played 40 minutes and deadlocked at 67 apiece. Willie Scott has the open chip shot. Trying to utilize the backboard, it wouldn't go. Manley had it left away, and it's taken by Scott. Bradley on the attack. Opening minute of play of overtime. Tulsa ranked number eight in the nation. Bradley trying for the upset. Bradley unranked by either the AP or the UPI poll. Willie Scott. That's Boise winners. Last year he led the nation's high school seniors in scoring. Anderson down low. The tap by Reese. Adam Reese, the Chicago, Illinois senior. And hang on. We've got a foul coming up. It is on Donald Reese. No basket. Anderson missed the shot inside, Wayne. We can see great pass inside to Mitchell Anderson. 
who misses the shot. Donald Reese coming down the middle, goes up and tips it in. It's called for pushing on the play. A tough call to make in a situation like that. Really hard to determine from the replay whether or not he shoved or not. Donald Reese leads the ball game with his fifth personal foul, and Barney Mines comes on for the Bradley Braves. At the line, the man who was pushed on the rebound, Bruce Badley. Not only does Bradley lose the basket, but they lose Donald Reese on his fifth foul. And he's just been an awesome player for the Braves. Badley missing on the free throw, and Boise Winters clears the board. Willie Scott steers a dribble against Paul Pressey. Third kill moves it across. We're tied at 67 apiece. Just about one minute into this overtime period. Third kill looking for help, and he's fouled. Fouled by Badley. Badley was taking part on the double team, and that is four personal fouls on Badley. Both teams have long been over the foul limit, and David Third Kill appears at the free throw line. Third Kill out of St. Louis, Missouri, 6'7, averaging 13.6 points per ball game on the campaign. One and one opportunity. He has his 13 points here today. And he puts Bradley on top by a point. Third kill has been a little bit better than a 50% free throw shooter. David Third kill, a great athlete. Two great point two Bradley three. lead. Dick Versace up off the bench, directing the defense. Tulsa on offense. Mike Anderson. Tulsa ranked number eight. And as we've been saying, Bradley looking for the upset. Steve Harris with the up fake. Plays to Pressy. Pressy operates the ball club from the point. Down low, Harris to Stewart in the lane. In traffic, banks it high off the glass. It wouldn't go. Rebound is back tap and chased down by Mitchell Anderson. Cross court to Willie Scott. We've got an injury. David Third kill is down for Bradley and appears to be favoring his right leg. May have been stung in the thigh. They hold up action. David Third kill in a lot of pain. It's not his knee, or he wouldn't have been able to bend it like that, Wayne, and that's that's fortunate. We don't really know what the problem is at this point. It's the ankle, it looks like. He turned the ankle over. And is in pain, obviously. David Third kill. Been a big man in Bradley plans here this afternoon. We Hope that it's just a Charlie horse or something. These games coming up next, Texas A&M against Houston. Great Southwest Conference battle. Nebraska and Kansas State. That'll be a good one in the Big 8. Minnesota against Iowa. A Big 10 clash. And Oklahoma against Oklahoma State. A great in-state rivalry. Wayne, we get a, get a chance to see what happened here with third kill. You see him inside there, number 35. He's going for the ball. He comes down, turns that ankle over is what happened. I tell you, it's hard to believe that uh, that he would be able to play anymore today with the way he's limping off the floor. That means Bradley is playing now without third kill and without Reese. They have a two-point lead with three and a half minutes to go. You have to wonder now if they'll sit on it and try and protect that lead. There's a lot of time left. And protecting leads, sitting on the basketball against Tulsa is very difficult because they're so very effective defensively. Let's see how the Braves play it. Some concerned faces on the sidelines. Bradley fans, this is just another of the many great games this afternoon here on NBC. Marty Mines plays the inbounds pass to Willie Scott. Kerry Cook is in the ball game, replacing third kill for Bradley. Marty Mines over to Willie Scott. 3.23 to go. Inside winners. The tap is good. for Bradley. Steve Harris in the corner. Mike Anderson back to Harris. Bradley in the zone. Tulsa would like to get the ball to Harris. He shoots over his home at 63% efficiency. Harris a bit out of his range. Picked up by Anderson in the zone. Now Mike Anderson of Tulsa with the basketball. 2.45 to go. Harris from deep. Comes up short. The tap by Badley and a foul. And it's on Bruce Badley on the rebound. Five. Three is the number flash to the scoring table by Ron Fisher. Badley inside. Makes a move. Going 
looking for the basketball right there, trying to get inside, is over the back, and draws the foul. And on number 53, and he is out of the game. Bailey, his fifth personal foul. The substitution is Herbert Johnson, the freshman. I may be wrong, Wayne. I wonder if he reported or came directly off the bench. I know that Richardson was trying to get a timeout, and he will get it with two minutes and 39 seconds to go in overtime, and Bradley leading it by four. We'll return to Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois, after these messages. It's kind of slippery. I'll be careful. Besides, we're not alone. Ah, yes. We've got the blimp behind us. The sisters may not know that Goodyear rolls up 9 million miles a year testing tires, but they sure like the traction they get. So, with the blimp behind us, our car handles just divinely. <laughs> get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. Oh, it's good to have friends in high places. Honey, that blue paint looks fine for our new house, but I don't think we brought enough with us. <laughs> yeah, and who knows if there's a custom paint store around here. D&W, paint and paint supplies. The Pell System Yellow Pages talks when your fingers do the walking. You save gas, money, and time. Al's Paint, corner of Oak and Third. We match colors. Looks like we've run out. That's okay, Dad. We'll just run out to the corner for some more. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We match colors. Let your fingers do the walking. Tulsa Golden Hurricane at 21-4. Bradley at 19-9. Tulsa ranked number 8 in the nation in Bradley. With an upset of the making, leading by four, 2.39 to go in the overtime period. Timeouts for many. According to the official scores table, one apiece, one for Tulsa, one for Bradley. Be a whole lot of coaching going on down the stretch here, Bob Ortigal. Well, there really will, Wayne, and there has been uh, in this overtime period and then throughout the basketball game. Big free throws, obviously, Bradley with the four-point lead. Winners has just been superb. He opened the ball game with about an 18-footer and drained it, and he's been tough ever since. He's got 15 points for the Bradley Braves, and this lead has been stretched to five. Boise winners, freshman Chicago, Illinois, led the nation in scoring as a high school senior with a 40-point average last year. Winners gets two down. Dick Persace and his Bradley Braves own a six-point lead. A chant of defense from the crowd here at Robertson Fieldhouse. Pressy trying to break the drop for Tulsa. Boise winners, there's the board. What a role the freshman has played for Bradley here this afternoon. Willie Scott on the drive, gets the step in the lane on the feed to Anderson. We've got a foul out front. Basket will not count. Foul coming up on Mike Anderson of Tulsa. That'll be his third. Third on Anderson, and it will send Willie Scott to the line. We get a look at it again. Willie Scott making the penetration. Anderson comes in from behind, going for the steal. Willie Scott makes the first free throw, shooting the second. The Bradley leads seven points. Scott has nine points. And the second drop for Willie Scott. 75-67, Bradley on top. Two minutes, 13 seconds to go. Tulsa has to score a bunch in a hurry. Steve Harris ducking in under. The rebound back tap down low, and Stewart able to can it inside. And credit Pressy, the man who kept the ball alive, slapping it down low to Greg Stewart. First two points of the overtime for Tulsa. Here's Barney Mines answering in a foul. Yes, and a count. Offensive foul on Barney Mines after the shot. Barney Mines hit with a second personal foul. But more importantly, Bradley continues to lead by eight with a minute 54 to go in overtime. Bradley broke the pressure in the backcourt, continued to pursue the basket, which is what you want to do. Too frequently, when you handle pressure in the backcourt, you get the ball in the front court, you pick it up, and you allow the defense to get back and play against you again. Bradley continued to go after the basket with the advantage, had a good shot. Mike Anderson at the free throw line. Hits the first, and he'll have another. Seven points the lead for still, the Bradley Braves. Still a lot of time to play. Upcoming, a great slate of college basketball as Anderson puts on his second. Six points the lead for Bradley. Full court pressure by Tulsa. 
Mitchell Anderson leaning into Pressy, and an offensive foul is called, and a great defensive move by Paul Pressy. That's the second personal foul on Mitchell Anderson, and it will send Paul Pressy to the free throw line. Now, hang on, it'll give Tulsa the basketball, they'll inbound. Look here, you can get a good look at it. Anderson definitely, no, there's no doubt about that. Back live, Steve Harris misses from the outside, he tries it again and hits. Harris following his own shot. It's not over yet. Four-point lead for the Bradley Braves. Anderson on the run, pulls up, hit from behind, and a foul is called on Herbert Johnson, who could not stop his momentum as he trailed Mitchell Anderson, and he has hit the sore back of Mitchell Anderson. Anderson has played throughout the entire season with back spasms and got hit to the back on the drive. Watch it again. We see the contact here. Anderson brings the ball into the front court, and it's literally just run over. But he got hit in the back, and you have to wonder about that, how much it will affect him, because... That thing has been reoccurring throughout the year for Anderson. He has continued to play with pain. You have to admire him for that. A great All-American. Mitchell Anderson, 10 points here this afternoon. His team leading by four. Anderson gets the first one down. That'll make that back feel better. It's a five-point lead for Bradley with a minute 37 left to go. Anderson, 11 points, matching the numbers on his shirt. Bradley leading by five, a minute 36 to go. We're in overtime, Tulsa on the attack. Mike Anderson over a crowd and a foul inside. Foul being indicated on the Bradley Braves. The foul is on Boise Winters, I believe. No, it's on, it's on Scott. Willie Scott. Make it Willie Scott, and that is his fifth. And the reason that hurts so much is because Scott handles the ball against the Tulsa pressure. If Tulsa makes this one and one situation right here, we have a three-point ball game with a lot of time to play. Tulsa counters right now with Phil Spradling back in the ball game for Stewart because of wanting to apply defensive pressure on the Braves. Mike Anderson at the line puts down the first. Eddie Harris, a freshman out of New York City, New York, comes back into the ball game for Bradley. And there is Willie Scott. He is out of the picture. He's out of this game on fouls. A minute 29 to go in overtime. A rebound taken by Kerry Cook. Bradley owns a four-point lead. Harris plays ahead to Anderson. It's broken up by Pressy. Taken by Johnson. Pressy on the drive has it blocked away and knocked out of odds. And a foul coming up on Mitchell Anderson. Anderson guilty of his third personal foul. And it will send Pressy to the line. Phil Spradling, the man who broke up that play and then got the basketball somehow out to Paul Presley on the drive, and Anderson guilty of the foul. Bradley takes its final timeout in the overtime period, and we've got a break in the action. A minute 18 to go in overtime. We'll return after these messages. You know people like us. We're teachers. Firemen. People just like you. These are the uniforms we wear at work. But these are the uniforms we wear when we serve part-time in the Reserves and the National Guard. You see, in the Reserves and the Guard, you not only serve your country, you're part of a first-rate team, training alongside real buddies. Yet while you serve, you can live at home and keep your full-time job. Because in the Reserves and the Guard, you don't have to give up one life to live another. The Reserves and the National Guard. Talk to your local recruiter. The beauty of a Delta faucet is, when it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. Its washerless design helps keep it from dripping, so it lasts and lasts and lasts. Delta faucet. We're first because we last. Light beer from Miller tastes just great, and that's no fish story. But the best thing is, it's less filling. Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and that's important when you're trying to land that big one. Like yesterday, I hooked this bass, fought him for over six hours. All of a sudden, he jumps clean over the boat. Broke my rod, and I had to tie the... No, wait a minute, fellas. I had to tie the... Light line beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Left me out there with nothing but a paddle. Bradley leading by four here in overtime with a minute 18 to go. As soon as we get a winner here, we'll be joining Texas A&M at Houston or Nebraska at Kansas State. 
Some of you will see Minnesota and Iowa. Others will be watching Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Soon as we have a winner here. Conference between freshman Steve Harris, senior Mike Anderson at the free throw line. Paul Pussy misses the first of a two-shot foul. The difference right now is that Tulsa's playing with veterans down the stretch. Bradley with young players that are inexperienced. Let's see if that makes a difference. The lead is three for Bradley. Eddie Harris, a freshman, number 23, plays cross-court to the senior Mitchell Anderson. Anderson gives up his dribble, now looking for help. Throws ahead for Kerry Cook. Kerry Cook on the sideline, spinning out of traffic. Cook plays to Barney Mines. 62 seconds to go. Harris chases down and is hit from behind by Herbert Johnson. Nope, they're going to call it on Anderson. Mike Anderson guilty of the foul. That is his fourth. Anderson and Herbert Johnson did a sandwich job on Eddie Harris. And as a result, Harris at the free throw line. The free throw shooter, Wayne, out of New York City, played for former Bradley basketball player Chuck Gramby at Andrew Jackson High School in New York. Pressy fighting for the rebound, a tie-up, and a jump ball is called. I believe it'll belong to Bradley. Yep. No, it belongs to Tulsa. Tulsa will get the basketball on the alternating possession of jump balls. The rule favors Tulsa on that one. They tie it up again and it'll go to Bradley. Spradling 22 in the corner. Harris looking for his shot. Rebound down low. Pressing. And he rolls it home with 43 seconds to go. It's a one-point ball game in favor of Bradley. Terry Cook having problems getting it in. Cross court the pass to Barney Mines. Bradley trying to salt away, 30 seconds on the clock. Mitchell Anderson plays ahead for Barney Mine, dribbles it off his foot, picked up by Johnson, ahead to Mike Anderson. Anderson bumps to the floor, no foul call. Harris picks up for Bradley. Eddie Harris, baseball feet ahead to the corner. And Boise winners, winners number 34. Inside Mitchell Anderson. Kerry Cook on the back door, it's blocked away by Preston a foul. On Paul Pussy, it is his fourth personal foul. Eight seconds remaining and a one-point lead for Bradley. It's a very fine pass on Anderson's part. Right here to Cook coming to the basket. He goes up. Pressy comes in from behind. Certainly didn't fall with the hand, but he may have hit his head. Pressy may have hit his head with his elbow. I think that's where the contact was made and consequently the foul. A timeout taken by Coach Nolan Richardson and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. 78-77, Bradley over Tulsa, eight seconds to go in overtime. We'll be back after these messages. Here comes Harry Gant as the Skull Bandit in for a pit stop. Hi, I'm Harry Gant. When I bring the Skull Bandit in for a pit stop, I come in for a paint stop. Because while the rest of the team takes care of the Bandit, I get to take a little pinch of Skull, put it between my cheek and gum for real tobacco pleasure without lighting up. Now that's what we call teamwork. And Skull's what we call team pleasure. For real tobacco pleasure without lighting up, try Skull. A pinch is all it takes. If you're one of the many people whose life insurance needs are changing today, check with State Farm. I'm State Farm agent Jim Scally. In today's economy, people's life insurance needs are changing, and State Farm is changing to meet those needs. We have a variety of life insurance products, all at a good price. We'll help you plan the program that's right for you, and we'll be there to help you keep it up to date. Check with State Farm. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Right Guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why Right Guard Solid has an action-triggered formula. Triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right Guard Action Triggered Formula helps keep you dry and odor-free all day. Right Guard Antiperspirant Solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. Way Laravin, Bob Ortigal. That is the full story. The time on top of your screen. At the free throw line, Kerry Cook, junior college transfer. Cook shoots at about 60. 6% from the free throw line. Bradley on top by a point. He can make it two. Going into this game, Wayne, there's no way that that young man anticipated being at the free throw line in that situation. Yeah, I have to give him a lot of credit. 
Cook for a three-point lead. Eight seconds remaining. Quickly, Tulsa on the attack. Harris down low, banks it home. It's down to a one-point ball game. Two seconds remaining. And we've got a stop in the play. Bradley, I believe, wants a timeout. No, I believe we have a technical foul. If Tulsa had used all of their timeouts, and they took a timeout to, That's right. to uh, stop the clock, it's an automatic tee. Bradley will get to shoot one free throw and get the ball out of bounds. But, ladies and gentlemen, we still have two seconds on the clock. That's the call. Nolan Richardson at his bench tried to signal for a timeout. As Harris made the shot inside. So the lead remains. One point, score the field goal. Tulsa tried to call a timeout they did not have. And as Coach Bob Ortigal mentioned, Bradley will be heading to the free throw stripe. And they're going to send out the senior, Mitchell Adler Anderson. Wayne, it's not a bad call on Tulsa's part. Our viewers need to understand that if they hadn't called the timeout, Bradley simply would have held the ball out of bounds. They had no chance. Anderson at the line, and he makes it a two-point lead. He can make it a three-point margin with two seconds remaining. And it would take a miracle for Tulsa if he converts on this free throw. 82-79. It'll be Bradley basketball with two seconds to go. And it appears the Braves have won the Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship. Mitchell Anderson hangs out of the ball up to London. The final score of Bradley Braves in the Tulsa Golden Hurricane 79. Special thanks to our NBC crew, our producer Robert Helders, our director Richard Cook, for Bob Ortigo, Wayne Larvey saying so long from Peoria, Illinois. Bruno wants it. It's kind of like making love. It's always terrific, but it can always get better. Bruno wants fame. Let's come to order. Pay attention just once.